Crystal Palace are still seeking a first league win of the season. They'd absolutely love to win that game today at Spurs if that were to come today. Uh, Oliver Glasner is expecting an extremely intense fixture. It's all about intensity. I think it's the team sprinting most, uh, make runs, runs in behind, always gives you pressure. As soon as you pass back, they start their pressing, then they run to the keeper. Very high line, and, and so it will be a very intense game. You, you don't have time to press, you don't have time, uh, a lot of time uh, to find solutions. But if you find them, uh, you can create chances. So this is uh, what Brighton did in the second half. This is what also Akma did in, in three, four situations when they could uh, put pressure on the defense, winning the ball high, or even with their uh, with a lot of pace and they came in behind. So you always get your uh, chances and this is what we will uh, go for. Well, Steve Brown will be watching this one alongside Andy Rowley. Steve, what kind of game are you expecting as, as we just see the players are just about to emerge out the tunnel? Well, I, I think I think you're going to get Spurs in a confident mood on the front foot. You know, they've got a, an exciting paddock. We've already spoke about in Mikey Moore making his debut away from home, that is. And, and I think they're going to be relishing the, the afternoon. For Crystal Palace, they've got to deal with pressure now. It's coming and it's coming fast. You know, I, I said to you previously, you know, it's a really poor top division start. They've only gone nine games without a win twice in their history and it was both in the second division. So this is breaking a record today if they don't win this fixture. It's been the first time Palace have ever gone nine games without without a win in the first nine games. So th 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 there's a pressure. I mean, as it stands, as the players come out, naturally the atmosphere cranks up and the home fans are getting right behind their team. Tottenham will want to disrupt that as quickly as they possibly can and we're going to see that high press, we're going to see them get in amongst it and they're going to see them try and put, the, the, or quieten down the home fans and put the home team under as much pressure as they can early on because there is a pressure there, Zab. Just seeing Mikey Moore walk out as a Premier League player, as a Premier League starter for the first time. Let's just hear the thoughts of his manager on him. His boss says he's ready for the challenge. He's ready to start any game. It's just, you know, like I said, I just feel that, you know, especially with young players, you just got to be, you know, really careful about, you know, their introduction into senior football. He, he's, it's not like he's, you know, um, even last year he didn't really have a full season of football. He had quite a few injuries, or a couple of injuries that left him out. He went from under 18s football to playing very little under 21s before we integrated him. So you have to look at that. I think he's still physically growing, and you have to take that into account. So it's. I think he's ready to play, um, start a Premier League game for sure. But it's about, you know, for me, it's about making sure that for us, what we want to do is, is continue to, to kind of develop Mikey in the right way, give him the platform to keep improving. Um, and, yeah, so far, whatever we've asked of him, he's, he's, he's made a real impact. And, um, yeah, the plan is to continue to do that. And that's Ange Postacoglu on Mikey Moore, who is Tottenham's youngest starter in the Premier League for over 30 years. He says he's ready, Ange Postacoglu. Tottenham fans will be hoping he's ready. Crystal Palace fans will be hoping he's not. And we'll find out either way in the next hour and a half. Your commentary team at Selhurst Park. Steve Brown is alongside Andy Rowley. Thanks very much, Zavi. Great to be here at Selhurst Park where the uh, fans gave the players an, a, a brilliant welcome despite the, uh, the pressure that uh, this Crystal Palace home team will be under to get a result here this afternoon. As uh, Steve was mentioning, it uh, has been a very poor start to the season in terms of a points return. Three points won from the first eight games. It's their joint worst start ever to a top flight campaign. Meanwhile, Tottenham come here in pretty good form. You take out that Brighton result and they are flying at the moment. 13 points from eight games, though, means they are eighth coming into this uh, Premier League game. Can they move up the table this afternoon? Depending on what happens at Chelsea, they could climb to fifth uh, this afternoon. Uh, depending on that game between Chelsea and Newcastle. Meanwhile, Crystal Palace 18th on three points. Uh, they could go above Ipswich with a draw or a win, but they're already five points uh, behind West Ham, who are 16th. And uh, that's even given the season that West Ham have been having. They won here, of course, earlier in the campaign. Crystal Palace desperate to get back to that kind of form we saw at the end of last season when Oliver Glasner's uh, team had five wins in uh, seven home Premier League games. Just uh, one defeat and scored 22 goals in those seven games uh, since then. 
winless in four here at Selhurst, drawing two, losing two, and failing to score in three of those games. Can they get a turnaround this afternoon, or will Tottenham continue uh, their run at the moment? Intriguing game here on BBC Radio London. I'm delighted to have you with us. Palace make three changes from the team that lost at Forest on Monday. Adam Wharton returns in midfield for Will Hughes. Ismail Assar comes in for Daichi Kamada and Jean-Philippe Mateta is in up front for Eddie Nketiah. Tottenham give that first league start to Mikey Moore at the tender age of 17. He comes in for Son Hyun Min in the only change from the last league game for Tottenham Hotspur when they uh, ran away with it against West Ham to win 4-1 with three goals in eight second half minutes. They've got Vicario in goal, Pedro Porro, Christian Romero, Mickey van der Ven and Destiny Udogi across the back. Dejan Kulisevsky who's having a great season alongside Yves Kasuma and James Madison who makes his 200th Premier League appearance this afternoon. And then Brennan Johnson is also a form player with Mikey Moore in attack alongside Dominic Solanke. We're underway here at Selhurst and uh, Crystal Palace in the red and blue striped shirts, the blue socks and blue shorts and Tottenham in the white shirts, dark blue shorts and white socks and the Holmesdale end of the ground in uh, great voice in the early stages here. Delighted to say that the former Premier League defender Steve Brown is alongside me and Steve uh, if Tottenham were hoping they, if the home fans will be a bit down here, <laughs> yeah. um, they haven't quite uh, lived up to that billing. They're up for it. They are up for it, but that's that's what you do get here at Celeste with these Crystal Palace fans. They always start off as they have today in very very good voice, but there there will be an apprehension amongst them if Tottenham can start quickly and on the front foot. And it, it, you know, no surprise they kicked off a direct 70-yard ball that actually bounced out for a goal kick. But you could see the intention was to put Palace's backline under pressure, and there'll be an apprehension amongst the fans if Tottenham start well and, and Palace are, are forced backwards defending their penalty box early in this game Pedro Porro has the ball on the right for Tottenham well forward but uh, Palace managed to win it back through Tyrick Mitchell uh, Eze was about to take over there but uh, Mitchell decided the best uh, policy was to uh, send it upfield and it was quite a way beyond Mateta and through to the uh, Tottenham goalkeeper Vicario Porro on the ball again the Spaniard playing that infield who's looking for Kulusevski it was brilliantly intercepted by Lerma and the Colombian's going to play it to Eze oh if he just maybe tried to take that down the touchline he might have been able to play it into the path of Mateta but Romero read it well he's in turn, the Argentinian got himself into a bit of a pickle and he's given it straight back to Palace. Yeah, a bit sloppy all round from both sides. You know, both in possession, both unnecessarily giving the ball away, but Palace breaking down the right. The Eagles uh, sending it in through. Sam Mateta trying to get on the end of that. It just went beyond his left foot, uh, but it'll run for Mitchell. Now Eze, just on the edge of the penalty area. Lerma, always encouraged to shoot by the Palace fans. They uh, can recall how he can hit them from that distance. And then a header back from Pedro Porro, who's not close enough to Vicario. And it's out for a corner to Crystal Palace very early in the game. Wharton is going to trot over to take this one. And an early chance for Palace. And that was a bit sloppy as well. Yeah, so you've had Romero give the ball away unnecessarily. And you've had Porro, who, I mean, it's not his fault there because it was Eze behind him. But he raised his hands I'm offside and Porro could have let it run poor communication he flips, tries to pick it back to his keeper straight out for a corner Wharton will send it in left footed it's gone low tempted flick at the near post uh, it came off a defender and out it goes for a throw in on the left hand side uh, Munoz will go across to take it uh, despite being on the left uh, and then the ball back to him from Wharton didn't read the way he was going it was behind him and it's out for a throw in to Spurs so both teams making a few unforced errors really in the uh, early stages here as Tottenham try and play it out from the back it's Basuma going back to Mickey van der Ven now it's Madison a little swivel from the former Leicester and Coventry midfielder yeah, and straight away he offers a composure doesn't he in the game slowed down as soon as he finds Madison in space two three touches calm in possession slowed the game right down Pedro Porro floating a ball over the top for the uh, Sweden international Kulisevsky to chase but uh, just skips off the surface and through to Dean Henderson the goalkeeper beautiful afternoon yeah. for late October here Steve sun's uh, drenching two thirds of the uh, the pitch and the fans in the stand opposite us yeah I must admit I got off the train a couple of hours back and was quite surprised by the warmth <laughs> <laughs> it's nice isn't it yeah could be jumper off in a bit but yeah <laughs> I, I, I mean we've seen we've seen a start really that, that, that's a bit nervy mm. you know and, and we understand 
on one front why one of these teams would be nervy with the, with, with the situation they find themselves in but Spurs uncharacteristically give it, making a lot of mistakes in these early stages another one there Palace pressing really high and well there through Eze and Mateta but they've just allowed that ball across the touchline as it came out to Lerma on this left hand side as Palace would look at it and it's gone out for a throw in to Spurs yeah trying to build up from the back Romero gets caught in possession he was very very casual very very slow poor first touch intercepted Crystal Palace applying pressure and I think you know Ange won't be overly fussed at the moment but he'll want them to sharpen up you know as quickly as they can it's not as crisp as he would have liked in these early moments don't think we've uh, seen a touch yet from Mikey Moore but uh We'll come back to that in just a second because we're going to get to Stamford Bridge uh, because there's uh, already uh, something to uh, talk about in that game between uh, Chelsea and uh, Newcastle uh, this afternoon, which is one of our featured games, along with, of course, the game between West Ham and Manchester United taking place uh, this afternoon. So uh, let's get across to uh, Stamford Bridge and get the latest from Rebecca Adams. Well, it's Chelsea nil, Newcastle nil, and the Blues fans were celebrating because they thought they'd gone a goal up through Cole Palmer, of course, who managed to slot in despite being looked to be caught off balance he got it in with his left foot they are checked they're ruled for offside so it is goalless so, still so far so nil nil in that one as it is here at Selhurst also West Ham Manchester United as I mentioned and uh, still to come this afternoon in the Premier League Arsenal against Liverpool one defeat for Liverpool under slot so far Arsenal with a, a few injury worries we'll uh, find out as soon as we hear Sack is going to start as the ball is held back to his goalkeeper by Romero. Mateta got the first touch on that, but just showed enough of the ball to Romero for the Argentine to get that ball away. Then Madison is caught in possession by Munoz. Then Lerma is battling away with Basuma. Will it run for Eze? He's going to try and touch it on to Mateta, and then Van der Ven wins it back for Spurs. And Palace are really working hard in that area of the pitch to try and disrupt Tottenham's flow. Yeah, absolutely they are, Andy. But the, the, the point being that Tottenham aren't going to change. They're going to they continue to play passes into players under pressure. There was a lovely little ball first time around the corner, and it was Lerman that then put pressure on that ball around the corner and just got a little still. Tottenham did recover it, but they're not going to change what they do. But if they do break the press, there's going to be opportunities for them going forward. We know they're exciting going forward. But at the moment, the setup for Crystal Palace out of possession and the and when they apply pressure is pretty good and it's caught a couple of defenders out and it's got a couple of midfielders out in those Spurs ranks and that's what I mean about crisping up your performance it was, it's was it been a little bit sloppy and Ange doesn't look too bothered look I mean he's got his hands in his pockets he looks pretty relaxed but I think as a manager when you're away from home and you want to impose yourselves early on a team that's struggling I think he would have wanted a, a, a bit of a sharper start in terms of the possession made a lot of changes uh, for Thursday night's game against AZ Altmar got the result he wanted to make it three wins out of three in that competition but kept a lot of the 11 you see out there today fresh for this one uh, Madison started in that game uh, with Doggy as well no Son this afternoon who uh, picked up a knock in that game against West Ham so uh, he won't be able to continue his incredible uh, record in London derbies in the Premier League and this is a, a favourite London derby for Tottenham who uh, have picked up a lot of points uh, in Premier League fixtures against Crystal Palace uh, 19 wins in their 30 meetings in the Premier League it's the highest win rate they've had against any London side in Premier League history 63% and they've won on their last two visits here to Selhurst but at the moment Crystal Palace asking them a few questions as well as Basuma tries to thread that ball through to Solanke played out at the back by Crystal Palace but uh, the ball out uh, didn't hit his target from Chalaba yeah. now out for a throw in it's, it's, actually, it's actually a really poor game at the moment if truth be told you know you're trying to give them the benefit of doubt sloppy start slow start whatever you want low tempo but <laughs> the ball the passing at the moment from both sides is, is tell it as it is that's what they want they want you to tell it as it is Steve yeah but it's it, I, and you're just looking now and you're thinking there's a, there was three sloppy passes in that little phase of play there and we're talking about within 20 seconds no one's really gotten hold of the ball taking control uh, which means you can't implement the style you know formations are irrelevant at the moment because no one's keeping possession well enough um, 
it's a real low key start actually it is it's a low tempo there's not a lot happening you know the plays in between the two boxes nothing in the boxes and it's just fire ah, that's nice from Mikey Moore and that's what he can do yeah beat the man got past Wharton skipped in field past him and then uh, fouled as he tried to then get away from Lerma so that's the first glimpse we've seen of him looking on his toes and sprightly out on that left touch line I feel he has been um, instructed to hug that touch line yeah. Steve he's really stretching the pitch that way isn't he yeah I mean he's, he's, he's only had three or four touches and you'd imagine you know he wants the ball to feet facing the defender with two or three yards to run at them that's going to be where he's going to cause an upset but at the moment he's received facing his own goal under pressure from a defender behind and so he's, he's, he, he, we've not seen a great deal but that's the first opportunity on the halfway line he's got turned facing up the defender he was really positive straight at him little jink on the outside and cut inside free kick so we, we want to see we want to see Mikey Moore with the ball at his feet facing defenders in the final third I think we'll see an exciting young talent Madison compared him to a uh, play like Neymar um, yeah, I mean, on the Thursday. That's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> Not bad. Um, another person watching that day uh, compared him to uh, Hazard in the way he runs with the ball. We saw a little bit of that dribbling there. And obviously, these are incredible players to be uh, compared to in, when you've only had a few appearances in uh, senior football. But uh, it's going to be very exciting to see his development over the next year or two. Um, fingers crossed. He, stays fit as Madison gets back to his feet second time he's uh, gone yeah. down under a challenge from Palace just uh, clutching his lower back didn't seem to be anything too bad in that and, uh, immediately plays the ball off his outside of his boot looking for Solanke his attempted ball across the six yard box comes off a defender and Henderson has got it for Palace yeah and it just opened up momentarily there but it, the, 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 the cross just took a deflection and took the sting out of it so it was an easy take for Henderson but yeah I, I, that's, that's what Madison he's going to get those little knocks because he keeps the ball a little bit longer doesn't he he invites pressure to, to get his head up to play around and the problem is when he does that he invites that little challenge a bit late so he's taken a couple of hits already one on the lower back there that I think caused a little bit of discomfort well he came off um, to, to be replaced by Saar against West Ham that's when all those goals started flying in but uh, he uh, is the creator and the most assured in possession in this team for Spurs and Palace trying to get forward themselves they played it down the left touch line but this made us uh, couldn't get to that ball off a deflection or maybe decided I'll let it run out because we've got the throw in well upfield and it's taken by Mitchell now Mark Gay plays it across the back to Lacroix and the Frenchman moves it out to Munoz on the right hand side the Colombian back into his own half to Chalaber on loan from Chelsea where same move Gallagher made and what an impact he had here at Selhurst that's a rare poor touch from Eze he's given it straight to Kulusevski now forward to Solanke who's getting away from Lacroix here and Lacroix has to go off his feet to get the challenge in he's put it behind for a corner to Spurs yeah but there's that first sense of apprehension from the home fans all given away unnecessarily boom suddenly there's groans everywhere and that's where they're at and this, this is why I'm surprised at Tottenham start because it has been a little bit sloppy yeah of course they're trying to build up from the back and they invite pressure but they've been in great positions and given the ball away unnecessarily and if they can you know maintain a, a you know an attacking presence for two or three minutes you'll see the crowd suddenly start to turn a little bit like look that was just a simple pass turned over and they were already ready to moan at the players it's the Mikey Moore short corner to Pedro Porro it's uh, met at the near post and Palace can clear it away just to the edge of the box but it's still right up there and it's out to Pedro Porro again the Spaniard up the touchline Mikey Moore trying to take on Munoz comes off the defender and it's another corner to Spurs yeah and it's good re good recycling you know you're keeping the pressure on little inventive corner tried something different but it's important that your players are in the right position for the second phase of that the pressure was applied again and they've recycled it to win another corner going for one of those short corners again only a yard or so to uh, Pedro Porro floated in headed back across goal by Romero out it goes as far as Kudasevsky and the referee has said it actually went out I think the cross before it came back in so it will be a goal kick to uh, Palace yeah. yeah a let off a let off you know there's two corners where you haven't really tested Crystal Palace on either they've been doing that quite a lot more this season though um, he was asked about that in uh, his press conference Ange Postacoglu ahead of the European game and he said you know we're always obviously working on set pieces how we can um, do things a little bit differently but mm. just playing it just a yard really from the, uh, the corner 
to Pedro Porro. As the ball is played upfield by uh, Palace. Again, cleared away by Tottenham at the back. And now Kulusevski crossing the halfway line. He's going to try and thread that forward. It comes off a Palace defender. It's out for a throw. And a weekend cross to London Stadium at West Ham against Manchester United. Nick Goldman is watching. It is West Ham nil, Manchester United nil. But Manchester United have had four clear-cut chances to take the lead. Alejandro Garnacho hitting the bar after a couple of minutes. He then fired wide a few moments later. Rasmus Hoyland has forced a good save. Uh, from Lucas Fabianski and the best chance of the lot really was Bruno Fernandes with a free header seven yards out a few moments ago and he put it over the top West Ham are under the cosh but quarter of an hour gone it's nil nil thanks very much Nick uh, commentary continues on that game with Nick Goblin and Bradley Allen on the BBC Sport website and we can also drop in again at Stamford Bridge Chelsea against Newcastle latest in the first half from Rebecca Adams well, it's Chelsea nil, Newcastle nil. The best chance of the home side coming through Cole Palmer on after just four minutes. It's all gone very, very angry around here. Uh, you can probably hear the boos from the crowd. There was a challenge, I believe, from uh, one of the Newcastle players. Uh, the Newcastle captain, him and I, I'm not sure who challenged, but the crowd weren't happy about it. Um, I'll bring you more on that as we get it. But it's still goal. There's nothing much happening. Thanks very much, Rebecca. Here at uh, Selhurst, it's nil-nil between Crystal Palace and Tottenham. Uh, Spurs won 2-1 here on October the 27th last year. Um, same day. Oh. <laughs> Bit random. Yeah. 2-1 um, victory with uh, an own goal from Joel Ward and uh, second for Son, leading to a 2-1 win for Spurs. Uh, Ayu got a late goal for Palace. Out to the left it comes to Mitchell. He's going to wrap his left foot around that, looking for Eze, headed away up in the air by Basumo. Back into the box it goes. Again, Tottenham get it away. Lerma leaps well to head it into the penalty area, but there's Udogi to pounce on that, and he gets it to Mikey Moore. Two Palace players converge on the teenager, but he gets it back to Madison, who, as you mentioned, Steve, is stationed just in from Mikey Moore on that yeah. side. Yeah, I think that's a good move. You've got you've got one of your more experienced players who, you know, like we said, is making his 200th Premier League appearance just... You know, if he needs to, he might not need to, but if he needs to, just to control Mikey Moore and, and keep him in check, keep his emotions in check. But it doesn't look like he needs it. He's just, you know, just moments ago, he took the ball on his left foot, cut back onto his right foot, really early cross into the middle of six-yard box. No one in the penalty area anticipating him. It was a clear, uh, sorry, an easy header to clear away for the for the Crystal Palace defence. But, yeah, I, I, I think that's, I don't know if it's done on purpose, but certainly I think that will help. Mikey Moore if he comes up against any challenges today uh, he'll have a very experienced player on his inside just calming him down and, and talking him through it one short of his 50th Premier League goal I think as well Madison mm. so uh, that's a pretty good rate for a midfielder isn't it Steve one in one in four I would he say gets so. one today I mean Mateta's one in four and he's a yeah, no, I'm not knocking Mateta <laughs> no, 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 I'm just sure, saying it's, sure. it's a tough league you know it's yeah, a tough yeah, league yeah. Uh, as a Floating in a ball towards the back post. That's well left from Udogi, who uh, yeah. probably got a shout there from Vicario. It's goal kick to Tottenham. I don't know if he did, you know. Really? But if he did, excellent. But if he didn't, even better. Because he's very aware of his surroundings at that point. Because he was facing the wrong way. If he heads that, it's, it's immediately out for a corner. This, uh, this is dangerous. Vicario's played it out. Munoz is going to hit it. And it went straight to the chest of Bissouma. Wow, what a uh, chance that was uh, for Crystal Palace. And then a tough tackle coming in there from... Uh, Chalaba, but uh, no foul, says the referee. Play continues, and uh, Palace trying to get the uh, cross in from the right. Sar sends it in, it's caught by the goalkeeper, and uh, balls in the back of the net again at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea, Newcastle, Rebecca Adams. Yes, it is in the back of the net, and this time the goal stands. It's Chelsea 1 at Newcastle 0, and it was Cole Palmer who actually set it up. He had a great pass from deep inside his own half. Set it Pedro Neto for that. He provided the assist for Nicholas Jackson, who resumes his goal-scoring form. It's Chelsea 1, Newcastle 0. Those two work very well together, Jackson and, and Palmer. Here's Munoz uh, with another chance to make something happen for Palace. They really are snapping into the tackles. Uh, Kulusevski trying to win it back off Wharton, but doesn't get it. And now it's out to Mitchell again on the left for Palace. Eze, back to goal on the edge of the penalty, Tottenham penalty area. Gets it back to Gay. And now forward from Lerma, doesn't quite reach uh, Mateta, Romero intercepting, this is quite haphazard at the moment from Tottenham, can't seem to calm it down at the moment as Palace keep coming at them Saar trying to get away and a doggy uh, does well to win it back but immediately given away by Van der Ven to Lerma he seems like a magnet for the ball at the moment 
if there was anything magnetic in the ball, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I've got to say, I, do, do you start saying that it's, it's the pressing from Crystal Palace and the amount of players they've got in four positions causing Tottenham issues, or are Tottenham just a bit sloppy in possession? I'm going to go with a bit of both. You know, I, I, I will give Glasner a bit of credit in terms of how he's got his team set up to press when the ball's played into that midfield but I, I think Tottenham there's a lot more to come in terms of quality as this game progresses Steve Brown alongside me you mentioned the away form under Ange Postacoglu it's uh, exactly even uh, coming into this game 1-8 drawn 7 lost 8 in the Premier League since the uh, Australian took over at Tottenham chance for uh, Solanke to try and get away that looked like excellent defending from Lacroix up against two uh, Tottenham players at the end Lerma's gone down um, he's on his haunches at the moment he's uh, just trying to get back to his feet as Palace try and break up the right hand side Van der Ven comes across the cover and it's a throw into Palace almost level with the Spurs penalty area and uh, Lerma looks like he might need some treatment here and Will Hughes is warming up yeah that'd be a blow I think I think Lerma's a, 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 a big presence in there physically He's been really getting about as well, yeah. hasn't he, in yeah, the early I mean, stages of this game? He, he, if you want to play a pressing game where balls go into opposition and, and you have someone that can physically get tight, and if they get rolled, they can also deal with that. Lerma's a very influential player in that respect. Will Hughes probably not quite as good at that. You know, very intelligent footballer who does a great job in there, but probably not as physical, mm. you know, in a 1v1 situation, in tight 1v1 situation. So or maybe as quick as well. That's you know, what I mean. Yeah. So, so if he gets rolled, he can kind of deal with the roll and, and recover and make a challenge still. He's very, very good at that. But he, it, it's, it's interesting he's gone down with no one around him, no play. You know, that generally means you, you've, you've, you've got quite a bad issue. But yeah, the, 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 I mean the game's. I mean it should have settled down by now, and it really hasn't. You, you know, it's it's most of the opportunities have come both teams' ways have been off turnovers when they shouldn't have really, or the ball shouldn't really have been turned over. But yeah, well, it's really denied Tottenham any rhythm, though, aren't they? And I know you say that you know it's partly down to yeah, Tottenham it's being both. Yeah. not perfect with their passing, but yeah. the pressures kind of yeah. causing that at times well he said that in his, he said that his interview just, just before the game Glasner he said that you know we, we've seen what can happen if you get your pressurising right there are opportunities and he mentioned Brighton and he, and he mentioned Altmar but um, yeah I, I would I would say there's better to come from Spurs I would also say you know give, give Crystal Palace a bit of credit they are they are loading with numbers in the forward area to try and win that ball on the press and Tottenham haven't been good enough at this moment in time to play through it Lerma is coming towards the touchline very, very slowly, plodding across, and doesn't look like he is going to be able to continue. No, Will the Hughes board's is being up, isn't it? ready, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, the board's up and ready. So the, you know, you, you've got to imagine that's that for Lerma, which I, I said is a bit of a blow. Is that? You said no one was with him. I mean, you think it's likely to be muscular and yeah, some little strain, maybe just protecting him a little bit because he's. He looked like he was quite keen to continue, but they've, they've had a chat and don't feel that it's going to be possible. Hughes is back on, uh, having started the last game at Forest. And Lerma is getting a good reception as he goes down the touchline, the former Levante and Bournemouth midfielder. In comes a cross for Palace. It's over the head of Mateta, headed away by Romero. Palace try and nod it down. Hughes goes in with the head there to try and uh, get there ahead of Solanke. And now it's helped out to the left-hand side. There's a man down for Spurs and holding his head. And that means that the referee, Darren Bond, will stop the play. Yeah, you're obligated to, aren't you, with a head injury? So you can do all you like, but, it, but, but realistically, a referee has no choice with according to other laws of changed over the years anything with it you know if you don't address this and it is a serious head injury yeah. you, you're, you're banging trouble as a referee Kulisevsky so. is down it was um, two players going up for a ball and uh, just got caught maybe by a, a flailing arm there did uh, Kulisevsky yeah I think I think we've got probably the the weakest of the three games at the moment having, having whizzed around the grounds you know what, I was just about to say Steve I can't remember anything of real quality no I've, I've got first half talking points and I've got nothing Lerma there. going off I've got, yeah I've got nothing there at the moment so you know it's it's one of those games that, that I'm sure will you know catch fire at some point but at, at the moment it, it's slim pickings in terms of quality on the pitch yeah well three points as I mentioned from the first eight games for Palace this has happened before in the top flight, but only on three occasions for the Eagles. That kind of return after eight games, uh, 1980, 81, 
2013, 2014 in the Premier League and also 2017, 2018. Um, one of those was, of course, the season when uh, they had to change the manager after four games and Roy Hodgson came in uh, to replace De Boer and they lost the first three games under Roy that season. They still uh, stayed up comfortably, which is quite amazing, Steve, when you get no points from the first seven games. It is. In a 38-game season. No, absolutely, it, it is. But, it, but, but, you know, there always, there always tends to be sort of four or five weak teams across the 38. And, and I, think, I think Wolves will probably be an example this year. Everyone expects them to recover and, and finish quite comfortably out of the relegation zone. And Palace were, were Wolves of that year. Um, you know, we've always said Roy does exactly what he says on the tin. You know, he, he gets into a side, he, he understands the Premier League, and he gets the best out of the players that he's got in his squad. It's not inspiring at times, but he gets the job done, and he did get the job on, done on multiple occasions, and that allowed Crystal Palace to grow behind the scenes. You know, they've done a lot of great work. Um, it's just down the road from here with the academy, in terms of what they built, just down in Beckenham. But um, yeah, we, we've moved on, and um, Glasner's gone from probably thinking what's this Premier League all about this seems quite simple <laughs> yeah. to ah right okay when you hit a tough time the pressure comes thick and it comes fast they're trying to get Kulisewski back on here Tottenham but uh, Porro has gone down on the uh, right touch line um, under a challenge and he's stayed down and well and there might be some fans here uh, Steve who haven't been too often before who think I probably should have just stayed having Sunday lunch well <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping there's, there's better to come, Andy. And uh, you know, we, we look. Games do sometimes do this, yeah. where, where where it just doesn't happen for either side, particularly. But the onus is on Crystal Palace with the home side, with the start they've had. My, my worry watching this first 20 or 25 minutes or so is, is how are they going to score? Because Tottenham haven't really played particularly well. They've they've intercepted the ball in very good positions, and they haven't tested yet Vicario at all. They they've only scored four five four. Premier League goals well, all season, haven't they, Palace? Failed to score three times here, you know, at home. Two points from a possible 12. This will help, putting the pressure on, winning set pieces. I think there's probably a chance for a set piece if you get the delivery right. But it's it's their conversion, well, not even their conversion rate, they're actual creating opportunities, you know, is a bit of a struggle for them there. Well, whereas when, when Glasner first joined, when you had Elise and Eze, yeah. they were creating opportunities for fun. It was unbelievable, that spell. Hughes has a corner, it was a cross from Mitchell that came off uh, Basuma, so here comes the corner, he's played it quite short to Wharton, back to uh, Hughes, in it goes towards the far post, and headed over the bar by Lacroix, who was arriving at pace there, and uh, probably should have got over that a little bit more, it wasn't that high, but he won it all ends up, and that is one of the best opportunities, if not the best opportunity of the whole game so far. Yeah, had to climb over a defender, which, which made it difficult for him to get above the centre line to head it down. But he certainly attacked it with purpose, Lacroix. But he, he, he couldn't get above it. But I, I thought that was a little bit lazy from Spurs. A little short corner, they were late out getting two men out. They were late trying to pressurise the ball. They allowed the cross to come in far too easy. And like, Ange doesn't give a lot away. But I, I, I can't see him being overly impressed with the first 25 minutes. But he doesn't seem to be too animated. He's well, not one of those managers. But as you said though, Steve, you know, they're the away team. And um, although he would much prefer them to be playing their free-flowing best, at the moment, you know, there's probably a lot more to come from them. You would have thought so. I mean, look at that. Romero's just turned on a ball, pressurised from Mateta, curled it straight out at play, no more than 35 yards up from the byline. So, yeah, I, I mean, I think I think if he, it, it, you know, if you if you opened up his brain and his thoughts popped out, it would be this is this is not good, you know. And, uh, but he is he is one of those calmer managers on the sidelines. He certainly doesn't give a lot away with his body language. Um, but he, he, he can't be too happy with how things are going at the moment. Munoz trying to get away down the right-hand side, but uh, Doggy is there for Tottenham, and uh, they both end up in a bit of a pile on the, uh, the turf, and it's uh, ended up as a free kick to uh, Spurs. Munoz just a little bit eager there to uh, win that back, and Tottenham play it back to the goalkeeper Vicario. You can just tell it. Fans are starting to feel a little bit shortchanged so far as well. <laughs> um, they want a bit more from both teams, I think. As Basuma just plays that to Madison. Madison Cooley helping it on to Udogi down that left-hand side. And he's got Mikey Moore over on that touchline. Back in field from the youngster to Madison. Mikey Moore, who only turned 17 in August, signing his 
first professional contract the next day made his first Premier League appearance in May against Manchester City in that strange game uh, in terms of the atmosphere you might remember is Johnson plays that into the penalty area for Kulisev to get a chase cross comes Lacroix and he's put it out for a throw in to Spurs on the right hand side level with the edge of the Palace penalty area yeah he's a player that struggled to get into it isn't he Kulisevsky we mentioned a couple of times he is trying to break from this right hand midfield position behind that Palace defence but he few and far between but Solanke is another player we've barely mentioned you know he's barely had I'd like to see the heat map and how many touches he's had because he's, he's very isolated as it stands floated forward looking for Mateta by Palace uh, Romero tries to chest it to a teammate but it doesn't come off and now Ismail Asar is racing away Udogi uses that great pace of his to try and get back and he's done brilliantly against two Palace players but they were stretched there and it's been won back by Hughes here's Sar again he's got options in the penalty here if he can find Mateta sends it a shot and it's straight down the throat of Vicario and Palace with another opportunity there to make something happen Eze and Mateta were both uh, options he went for the shot in the end Sar yeah 29 minutes in first shot on target comfortable save for Vicario I like the fact that Van der Ven got Mateta on the outside on that right foot the angle's almost impossible to score from it having something quite spectacular across Vicario into the far corner to beat him um, and again Udogi brilliant recovery but caught in possession you know you this is yeah Munoz has won it back another mistake but the back by Tottenham and it comes towards Eze flicks it Mateta yes for Palace they score there Mateta back in the starting 11 and fires that in Tottenham Hotspur diving in to try and stop that one as it just came from Eze through to Mateta and Mateta didn't have much time but just enough to rifle that in left footed and Palace have needed that badly now we see if Tottenham have got a response it's Crystal Palace 1 Tottenham 0 yeah. again trying to build up from the back the one thing you can say about Spurs is they will not change what they do but it's Van der Ven who receives it's, it comes across from I think it's Romero across to Van der Ven he gets, gets himself in a pickle he gets caught in possession the cross comes back in from Munoz and there's a little bit of luck there or is there I don't know if that's a brilliant first touch or a bit of luck on the touch that finds itself across to Mateta but once it comes to him and he gets the ball out of his feet he just powers his left foot through the back of the ball and it's good I don't know if Eze's pulling that down to himself or that's a genuinely brilliant flick on I'm not sure but once it gets to Mateta the first touch is good enough to leather through the back of the ball with that left foot and it beats uh, it beats Vicario it's underneath him it's not really either side of him but through him and underneath him and Palace have the lead it's been coming to be honest got his laces through it didn't he Mateta yeah. just really lashed at it I've always uh, learned that with Eze you, you kind of think that he probably did mean it <laughs> given his amazing repertoire of skills yeah yeah I, I just think if you're Eze you want to touch that yourself and get a goal but I think he'll tell you that was meant you know because he was in that attacking position and it's led to a goal but yeah I, brought on by really sloppy play again from Spurs they've just not been at the races in terms of playing through the units but what it's I only so long you can keep playing like that yeah, yeah, it started yeah. to lead to chances to Palace and that's where they really should have you know, switched on because they kind of got away with it for yeah. a quarter of the game yeah and, and some, manager would have, some managers would have whistled up and said we're, we're abandoning it for five minutes and we're going to go long and we're going to fight go to Solanke we're winning not, not, not Spurs you know and just possible Cogley won't just won't do that you know but they've, they've not been slick enough today playing out for sure Van der Ven forward to a doggy and here's Mikey Moore in the sunshine out on the left plays it in front of Madison to the byline looking for Solanke and it's a great bit of defending getting back there by Mark Gay it's behind for a corner to Tottenham and there's been another goal at Stamford Bridge Chelsea against Newcastle Rebecca Adams yes that's right it's Chelsea 1 Newcastle 1 and after a VAR check the goal still stands Newcastle have got the equaliser courtesy of Alexander Isaac a lovely assist from Lewis Hoy tapped in from close range and it is Chelsea 1 Newcastle 1 corner to uh, Tottenham 
Palace uh, bringing everyone back in it comes right footed Hughes goes for it might come to Van der Ven flicks off a defender and then off to the post and Crystal Palace get it away it hit the post but they stay ahead Palace and now they're breaking with Mitchell over the halfway line Tottenham get players across to try and deal with this breakout and then Mitchell is shoved over by Kulisevsky free kick to Crystal Palace thinking about taking it quickly and then just wait with Mark Gay and we can cross to London Stadium West Ham against Manchester United Nick Goldwyn it is still West Ham nil, Manchester United nil. Five guilt edge chances missed by United in this opening half an hour or so. The last one, the pick of the bunch. Ball forward, Diogo Dalot chasing it. Fabianski raced off his line. Dalot knocked it over him and with the entire goal at his mercy, seven yards out, literally without even a goalkeeper, he managed to absolutely sky it. Extraordinary. Nil-nil. Thanks very much, Nick. Commentary continues on that game on the BBC Sport website. Uh, just back to that big chance chance yeah. for Tottenham Steve it was Van der Ven who hit it but it came off Brennan Johnson yeah. kind of turned it onto the post yeah Henderson beaten knew nothing about it very fortunate for him that it's just as a floated free kick flicked on at the near post by Gay straight into the goalkeeper's arms yeah no, can't get any power can't generate any power because the ball into him's got no power and it's incredibly difficult to get neck muscles through that and, 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 and add additional power to cause Vicaro any trouble Hughes winning a ball back there as uh, Brennan Johnson tried to flick it down the touchline for Kulusevski and then Johnson getting back to try and make good what happened and he clatters Eze but it has led to a corner again to Crystal Palace yeah. 1-0 they lead 34 minutes gone and the game's come to life and, and suddenly we've got a response from Spurs Madison breaking down the left winning the corner from that corner that Van der Ven drive across the six yard box turned towards goal by Brennan Johnson like I said Henderson knew nothing about it he was beaten flush off the post and back out for Palace to clear but suddenly we've got an atmosphere again and we've got a little bit of an end-to-end -end game for the time being corner from the left-hand side as they will take it for Crystal Palace right-footed delivery floated towards the back post headed uh, back across goal but it goes straight into the back of the head of Udogi and he's been fouled as Munoz was trying to win that ball back it's a free kick to Spurs just on the edge of their penalty area in front of that away contingent who are virtually all Steve shielding their eyes looking into the sun yeah Will Hughes again wins the ball back for Crystal Palace his cross left footed a raking cross headed away by Tottenham in defence Wharton went in for that header two players coming together there and it's uh, Mikey Moore who comes away with the ball and the Palace player is uh, still down Wharton after I think he took a blow to the head there there's quite a few Palace players who quickly converge to see if he's all right um, he's just being helped back to uh, a sitting position by one of the Palace doctors or physios yeah Moore's yeah. just maybe just caught him with his elbow it, as he jumped for the listen, ball but no, no knowledge I don't think of where oh god no no that's two, that's two honest players just nothing but the eye on uh, keeping their eye on the ball and Wharton just ducks out of it at the last minute but unfortunately by ducking he meets the elbow of Mikey Moore and I mean it's a shame because Tottenham that's the best opportunity on the counter-attack Tottenham have had Kulisevsky in possession breaking down the right Johnson would have found well played the ball in behind Johnson would have got on to the end of that but it's like I said earlier you're obligated now as a referee to stop play for a head injury because if it's something serious and you let play go you will get absolutely crucified as a referee so shame for Spurs you know that developed into a wonderful situation but at the expense of Wharton taking one on the temple personally um so it's good to see him back in the, uh, the starting 11 today uh, so uh, excited watching his ability to step straight up to the Premier League in the second half of last season there's actually a, a ball still on the pitch down below us which um, should yeah. have been spotted by the officials because they've got two balls on the pitch at the moment yeah proud of letting them know but they, no, no one they still don't know yeah some of the crowd are trying to let the uh, officials know still haven't noticed as players back underway Wharton's still not back on so Palace temporarily down to 10 men as Tottenham have it with Romero at the back out to Kulisevsky on the right hand side now back to Romero again Van der Ven the Dutchman moving it out to Udogi Madison to Solanke here's Pedro Porro up the right he'll go to Brennan Johnson Johnson's cross flicks off Mitchell and it's out for a corner and they will be able to remove that second ball now yeah 
Yeah, it's amazing that the, 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 the assistant over here can't <laughs> see that, but so yeah. focused on the line and the, the, the passages of play that they've got to keep their eye on that. And he was, once play was underway, he, he couldn't yeah, leave could, the, yeah. uh, where he needed to be on the decision-making process. So here comes the corner. This time they go a bit longer, Tottenham. It's uh, headed up in the air on the edge of the six-yard box. Still not away by Palace. Mateta gets it away as far as Eze on the edge of the box. Then Mitchell a bit further away. Kuliseski's just going to loft it back in towards Madison. Gay trying to head it down against his England teammate. Now Eze has it. He's turned back into trouble. And it, he's been caught out. And Tottenham have it back. Madison plays it short to Kuliseski. Back it goes to Madison, two Palace players coming in to tackle him and Eze gets it away and then uh, Ishmael Asar has just lost out to Basuma there and then Eze is a judge to have fouled Basuma as he was trying to get forward down the right hand side, the former Brighton midfielder winning the free kick Yeah I think there's enough on that for a free kick justified from the referee but again even that corner that comes in it's just a melee of bodies and headers and you know, Tottenham struggling really to create anything worthwhile, we've had that one Brennan Johnson sort of deflection onto the post but yeah Palace defending their box in numbers and pretty well making it very difficult for Spurs six minutes to go to half time plus stoppage time it's one nil to Palace here against Tottenham you're listening to BBC Radio London Sport on DAB here comes the free kick from Pedro Porro it's a brilliant delivery headed away by Munoz in the end Wharton up in the air Madison's underneath it for Tottenham He's lost out to Will Hughes and now Palace can break with one of their quickest players, Ismail Assar, taking it up the right-hand side. The former Watford winger's cross comes off more and it's going to be a throw into Palace on that right-hand side. Yeah, I just wonder if the sun, you know, causing those Spurs fans is a little bit of a favour this first 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, look, it's one, of, it's one of the tough performances. I haven't seen them too many times this year, but I, I, I imagine oh, yeah. Andrew yeah. will get into them at half-time and there's, there's more to come. We're starting to see flashes, but still not enough. Yeah, he needs a spark, really, from somewhere at the moment, the Australian. There's Romero. That's a really poor clearance, and it's straight to Mitchell. Mitchell's ball, though, was left by Saar when there was no one behind him, and Udogi can come away with it. He was uh, fouled, definitely, by Munoz there. I thought the referee was going to let that go, and he's actually booked Munoz for that foul, and that's the first yellow of the afternoon. Yeah. And just disrupt, disrupts play again. You know, doggy, dri doggy driving clear with it, brought down, and again, Palace get everybody behind the ball, disrupts the game. 10, 15 seconds knocked off the clock. You'll have to watch out though, Munoz, because Moore and uh, the doggy are going to ask questions. That's a ball into the uh, box from Tottenham, looking for Kulusevski. Uh, Palace have players back, and uh, I think they've got away with a throw in rather than a corner. That was excellent from Chalabert not to let that one just go out yeah the lofted ball over to, to Kulusevski that cleared the defence was very good but it just wouldn't come down in time so I think Kulusevski was right just to leave that and allow Palace to deal with it you don't want to give away a free kick when you're putting pressure on Palace are one up against Tottenham thanks to Mateta's fifth goal of the season floated ball in from Kulusevski it's uh, had a bit more devilment in it yeah it Something was a bit I, different yeah I, Henderson was very alert I have to say as soon as that ball as soon as it was chipped and it had air underneath it he was off his line very very quick made a very good claim middle of the six Solanke snuffed out he made a run across yeah purposeful run good Oops. diagonal run wasn't it as Eze has the ball for Palace he's going to float a ball into the channel for Mateta to chase look at the pace of Van der Ven brilliant recovery from the uh, Dutchman he's got the ball back for Tottenham when Mateta looked hot yeah. favourite to get to that but they have won it back again Hughes is ratting around in that midfield doing a great job winning the ball back for Palace and again uh, just muscling Kulisewski off the ball there two Palace players then there's a foul on Mark Gay and that's a free kick to Palace I think some of the Palace fans think there should be a yellow for that one but uh, no card on this occasion from the referee Darren Bond and it's a free kick to Palace just in from the left touchline midway inside the Tottenham half yeah it is time to actually credit Palace with, with the pressurising rather than you know Spurs have been sloppy but P Palace are continuing to pressurise in numbers and high up and at a, a real good tempo which is causing Tottenham to be very very unsettled in possession in the deep areas the passes and the clearance is really yeah. well I think it, it, you, you, you talk about making play predictable you know so it's, it's setting traps making sure that you're working from outside to in or sorry inside to out so you're letting Tottenham go on the outside and you're pressurising from inside to out and it's working particularly well at the moment Eze with the free kick it's uh, floated 
it in. Two Tottenham uh, defenders there and Van der Ven gets the uh, flicked header on it to put it behind for another corner to the Eagles. Yeah, yeah, ranking up actually, or racking up, sorry, the, the opportunities in, the, 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 you know, in terms of corners for shots on target. You know, it's all been Crystal Palace. Like I said, uh, he doesn't he doesn't give a lot away on the sidelines, but underneath he's got to be bubbling and boiling because this this is turning into a real disappointing first 45 minutes from Spurs. Hands you know, they're deep the, in his pockets. Yeah, they're deep. Uh, and Foster Cogley. Absolutely, they're in the ascendancy in terms of form. But the head-to-head -head in this fixture is incredible. It's the it, I think they've got the biggest win percentage of any London derby. Yeah. 63% Spurs win when they play Crystal Palace. They're going to have a lot of work to do to turn that round today. Here comes the corner for Palace from the right, sent in left-footed, headed away but only as far as Wharton. Back out to the corner taker, Hughes, flicks off a defender, then Tottenham head it up in the air. Hughes attacking that header to try and keep the pressure on, then hacked away clear by Madison. And uh, back in his own half is Mitchell, sends it to Eze, who's going to be pressurised there by Udogi, has to go back to his goalkeeper Henderson. whose manager refused to... Uh, lay too much blame on for that mistake against Forrest he let that shot in pretty easily and there's an offside there as Palace tried to send it forward down the left for Munoz to yeah. chase free yeah. kick to Tottenham yeah he would have come in for a little bit of stick I would have thought um, I, I, I watched that and I saw the goal go in and it was a poor right handed save you know he should have made the save and he would have been no one would have been more disappointed than Henderson himself it almost felt like he thought that it was going to go wide of the post so he kind of held his arm away from it, 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 it was very strange it, it was odd and he should have made the save and he knows that I quite like the way Glasner handled it though because when you're uh, under pressure like that it's quite easy for a manager to probably you know lay on the blame there but he didn't do anything like that Pedro Porro looking to try and spray the ball out of the left towards Moore good defending from Munoz who uh, just about got back to flick that away before it landed at the feet of Moore yeah, good link up actually through midfield from Spurs. First, I mean, that too many times. Here's Mikey Moore on the ball, edge of the penalty area, sends in the cross, headed away by Lacroix, only as far as Pedro Porro, who really rifled that on the volley from the edge of the box, but never quite dipping enough for the Spaniard. It's over the bar, and it remains 1 0 to uh, Crystal yes. Palace as we head into stoppage time. Yeah. Couldn't hear over the Tannoy how many minutes they'd uh, given there, Steve, as we're following the game. Yeah, it hasn't been put up either in terms of on the screen so yeah but but Mikey Moore showing you know what he's about dipping his shoulder to the left cutting back onto his right quick delivery into the middle of six yard box heady clear but good to see Porro on, 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 on the front foot driving onto the onto the football half volley but got underneath it and over it went but chances few and far between for Spurs but that was one of the better ones along with the uh, with the Brennan Johnson shot earlier ball one back by Chalaba for Crystal Palace the Chelsea Loney darting after it down the uh, touchline. Mickey van der Ven tries to skip away from him. He's been caught out now and uh, send, cross sent in by uh, Chalaba. Now it's uh, broken for Hughes to try and hit it and he's scuffed that, sliced it off his left foot outside of his left boot and the former Derby and Watford midfielder sees that go well wide. Mm. He has a little wry smile because he's. I think he's, he's basically fatted the shot as in a golf term. He's hit the ground first. Yeah, really scuffy that one. Yeah, ball played out to Kulisevsky again. He's put under real pressure by Palace, and uh, the ball's uh, run out. Oh, and uh, Mitchell and Kulisevsky have just had a little moment there. Don't see that very often from uh, Tyrick Mitchell, I have to say. Um, just a little shove in the back as he got up there. Don't know if there was a little bit of afters um, something said or. But um, yeah. referees allowed it to go. Yeah, really good pressure actually from Palace from. Hughes and then Mitchell comes in from the other side. There's a little push. Yeah, there's 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 not a lot in that to no. be honest. And I'm glad the referee's not shown yellow cards for that. Just t tell him to go up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, up yeah. You get. Let's yeah. get on with the game. You know. Wharton. That's a nice pass to Mateta who helps it down the right hand side. Can they get it across here, Palace? It's uh, Munoz trying to get the ball in and it's a good sliding block there from Madison who had to work really hard to go with his runner and it's behind for a corner. This yeah. will probably be the last action of this first half and it's another chance for Crystal Palace right before the break. Mm, good pressure again that led to the turnover on the halfway line which led to the quick counter. Lovely little give and go that led to the interception to, to, to give away this corner but it's, it's lucky Spurs can recover in the Great way they do Madison, that that's what I'm saying they, they have players that can recover so fast 
you know Dogi's one Van der Ven's another you know they, they when they when they when opposition teams get behind they recover so quickly they brought everyone back Tottenham Hughes with the corner he's looking for Lacroix punched away only as far as Eze and on the volley he sent that too high very very difficult skill it has to be said um, he's the sort of player that you you would think might be able to pull that off it was coming out of the sky and he had to hit it quickly with players coming out and he's yeah. uh, hit it with power but over the bar yeah Vicario comes makes the claim or the punch sorry it, it, it's dropping to the edge of the box coming out of the sky and if there's one person you want sort of on the edge of the box it is Eze he went for that powerful first time volley as it dropped on his right foot and he just got underneath it and over it went but again it's another opportunity for Palace you know and it's come from that turnover on the halfway line which led to the corner you know they are you have to give them credit you know they, I thought it was a bit mix and mix with Tottenham and now sloppy they were building up play but Palace's pressure has been very very good on that first ball into midfield can they keep that up as well because it will have that's taken a question. lot of effort won't that's it? the question when you have a team that plays like Tottenham the, the thing is you can't abandon it because you want them you want your position covering space this might take effect much later in the game more down the line Udogi with a good run for Tottenham pulls it back for Madison and a brilliant save from Henderson who got a left hand to that pushed it away it's cleared by Mitchell but only as far as Romero Pedro Porro trying to cross it in comes off Mateta Palace dragging everyone back Van der Ven moves it out to the left to Udogi now Bissouma about 30 yards from goal plays it to uh, Johnson helps it on to Pedro Porro he tries to hit a low cross and then Johnson on the follow up comes off Will Hughes it's a corner to Tottenham that's a brilliant save brilliant save from Henderson low down to his left Madison gets the shot away there's a lovely little break down this left hand side it's uh, Udogi to Moore back to Udogi he crosses it near Madison gets the touch and that is a brilliant reaction save low down to his left from Henderson it certainly was here's the corner from Pedro Porro left hand in the air this will go straight into the box in towards the near post attempted flick on there by Brennan Johnson cleared away by Crystal Palace that's five minutes of stoppage time already and uh, still no whistle from the referee it's uh, forward out to the right hand side of Pedro Porro he tried to help it down the line for Kulisevsky it's uh, across the touchline that will be a throw in a Crystal Palace and they won't be in a major hurry to take this with uh, the one nil lead still theirs yeah that should be that realistically once the ball gets back into play and I think they're good value for the one nil lead Tottenham are starting to come back into it now Mark Gay is uh, deliberately just kicked uh, another ball down the line uh, not off the pitch so uh, the officials weren't too happy with that it's cleared up field uh, by Palace Tottenham nod it down into the Crystal Palace half of the field and it's hooked away towards the right touch line and there is the whistle after six minutes of stoppage time at the end of the first half and Crystal Palace lead thanks to the uh, strike from Jean-Philippe Mateta they started just to fashion a couple of chances at that stage of the match after putting Tottenham under pressure for most of the first quarter of the game creating mistakes in the uh, Tottenham passing game and Mateta punished them on that occasion from a brilliant flick from Eze Tottenham hit the post at the other end of the field Brennan Johnson turning a shot from Van der Ven onto the uh, upright and Madison coming very close just moments ago was uh, pulling off a brilliant save was Dean Henderson low to his left hand side Crystal Palace have had uh, further opportunities as they have been the team on top if truth be told even though Tottenham will have probably shaded possession and territory it's Palace who've had the better chances and at the break here on BBC Radio London as we hand you to uh, Tammy Bird in the studio it's Crystal Palace 1 Tottenham 0 BBC Radio London the home of London football football Andy, thank you very much. Well, surprise, surprise, Crystal Palace in front at half-time against Tottenham. Let's go back to Steve Brown very briefly. Steve, do they look good value for that after the first 45? I think so. It was a very slow start to the game, if I'm honest, Zavi. It, it took 30 minutes for the first shot on target, and that was from Crystal Palace. I give Crystal Palace the edge because they pressurised very, very well that first ball into midfield. Tottenham were very, very sloppy across the back line and playing into midfield, caught in possession so many times but Palace weren't really taking advantage and the goal desperately needed a game and it came from 
Tottenham trying to play across the back of the uh, across the penalty area sorry the ball from right to left to Van de Ven he makes a, a mess of the possession he's in and the ball back in falls to Eze and we're debating whether he meant to, to control yeah, it into Mateta's path in yeah, yeah. We're, we're debating whether that was a, a touch meant for himself nevertheless it found its way to Mateta who was unmarked at the far post and he just put his foot through the back of the ball with power and it went under Vicario and from that point once we got the goal the game did become a bit end to end and Spurs did come back into it they had a couple of opportunities Johnson hitting the post Madison pulls a great save out of Henderson with a little flick at the near and we've had a Porro volley but that's not without Crystal Palace having other opportunities as well but it took half hour for this game to go in, get going and it needed a goal for it to do so my worry for Palace is if Spurs improve and find a way to score the pressure's back mm. on the home side very much yeah I mean, you were talking with Andy about how you might have rather had your Sunday lunch but for the first half now of this game you, well, ha you happy or not now? Yeah we're really happy now but we went to we went to Nick and Man United have had seven chances <laughs> and we went to Chelsea they'd scored one disallowed scored another one and we had another shot in anger it was a really poor game for 30 minutes Ab. it really was Abby I don't usually play a game down but at that stage it was uh, it was a good fair but it's really picked up as Steve said <laughs> just lastly Steve you mentioned that the fear from a Palace point of view because obviously Tottenham haven't quite been at it yet. Yeah. What's gone wrong for them? Is that that Palace are, are, are basically pressing them out of the game or is there something missing from their performance so far? Yeah, the first 15 minutes you're trying to work it out as a summariser and you're thinking, well, Tottenham are sloppy. Sure, I haven't watched them too many times this year and I thought, oh, they've been caught in possession so many times. They're a bit sloppy in possession. And then as the game grew on, you're thinking, no, Palace are setting decent traps here. They're pressurising at tempo to that first ball into midfield. They're catching Spurs out time and time again. So you sort of start to give them a bit more credit than I was giving them in the first 15 minutes but I do expect Tottenham you know you can't press like that for 90 minutes well it's very very difficult to do that for 90 minutes so at some stage you know we know Spurs will just continue to keep playing across that back line into midfield and out trying to play through the units and it's an awful amount of ground to cover when you're when you're out of possession does that sort to pay dividends in the last 20 minutes of this game you know it do, does space start to open up and as the substitutions start to be made does the game lose its way a little bit and Spurs can then come back into it I, I do think if Spurs score you'll see a massive swing in the pendulum of confidence and ability on the pitch that's what I imagine to happen if Spurs were to score if Palace can go on and get a second um, you, you know then that, I wouldn't argue against them deserving it the way they've attacked the game in the first they don't look like a side that hasn't, hasn't won in eight that, that, that's for sure Zab Thank you very much Steve very very finely balanced game that one at the moment Crystal Palace in front at half time against Tottenham Hotspur Palace still yet to win a league game so far this season Phil Parry was saying on Friday night that the best thing for this game was uh, Palace scoring first and they have scored first so it should be a very very fascinating second half and that will be with you on BBC Radio London DAB in the next 10 minutes or so it's also half time for our BBC Sport website commentary between West Ham and Manchester United. Nick Godwin, how on earth is it still nil-nil? Well, it is nil-nil, and I'll tell you why, because Manchester United have virtually produced every kind of miss during the course of that first 45 minutes. Garnacho's effort came off the bar after two minutes. He then slotted wide a couple of minutes later. Rasmus Hoyland's effort was saved at close range by Fabianski. Bruno Fernandes' free header from across uh, was over the top as well. Diego Dalot beat for, um, Fabianski, lifted it over him, and then with the whole goal of his, at his mercy, proceeded to blaze the ball over the top. Fabianski's punched a corner onto his own crossbar, and Cass Casemiro's header has been clawed away by the aforementioned West Ham goalkeeper. This game should be all over, <laughs> finished and done, but it isn't. At the other end, West Ham haven't created anything, really. Carlos Sola has been asked to play further forward. Looks as though he doesn't really know where to play. Mikel Antonio adrift up front. But remarkably, there is all to play for. West Ham need to improve profoundly. There is a massive problem in midfield and, and, and going forward. Um, the Manchester United really should have won this game comfortably, but it's nil-nil. How do they improve, Bradley? Oh, Bradley's just popped his head. Sorry, sorry, Brad. Xavi um, uh, was asking Bradley how on earth uh, uh, West Ham get better. Well, I, th I think what, what they need to do is, is fir firstly, Xavi, just play a, a yard quicker on, on their press mm -hmm. and, and the intensity. That most definitely will get the crowd up because they've been really flat 
and they'll be looking at this and obviously West Ham's struggles in recent weeks and their frustration and they'll be thinking to himself you know we can't we can't keep playing like this because eventually with all these chances that have gone begging for Manchester United you know they will score one they will eventually take one if the pattern of the game com continues uh, uh, into the second so that that's the dilemma I think for the for the West Ham coach now do they do they drop back in and play counter-attack themselves the West Ham fans want them obviously to squeeze and be braver and go after the football but when Manchester United have, uh, have won the ball and then there's been that space to hit notably through Garnaccio off the back of Wanzbazaka down United's left hand side mm. they look very very dangerous and count, um, you know created countless opportunities which two or three of them they should have took should have won this game by that half time whistle and had the three points in the bag but this crazy game of football West Ham are still in it and I think I think Lobotegi needs to be brave here and change personnel maybe put Somerville on to, uh, to give them a little bit more uh, attacking uh, influence even Danny uh, Danny Ings down the middle and, and 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 get the ball you know into the wide areas and get crosses into the box uh, for Ings to attack it because I think if if West Ham can be brave and force the issue here and get a chance because like Nick just said they haven't created a chance yet I was just going to say every single time I look up as well I've been watching this game on my phone Garnacho is galloping away into acres of space down that left hand side and it feels like West Ham have essentially massively got away with this so far is that is that what he's going to tell them at half time is he is he basically just going to say you've got lucky but let's use that luck and let's go out and perform better in the second half yeah a little bit I think if if upon review and you know his uh, reflection is honest he, he would he would probably say that to his players or or does he he let it ride for another 10-15 minutes um continue as it is don't change it see if they get to uh, to sort of 60 65 minutes and then almost uh javi have a charge up at the end of the game to try and pinch a goal if the score line's still nil nil and sort of uh, nick a three points and a slender one nil victory because you know sometimes that's all it is in some premier league fixtures you know west ham have uh, not been at their best they're not playing particularly well there's a lack of consistency and there's a lack of confidence i think across some of these players currently Bradley thank you very much second half commentary of that game between West Ham and Manchester United will continue on the BBC Sport website hopefully a much better showing from West Ham in that second half than the one that we got in the first the first half really there's a, a, a cacophony of misses from Manchester United the worst one being if you if you didn't hear Nick Godwin's report on it earlier there is a Diogo Dallo miss where he takes it past Lucas Fabianski in no man's land and uh, essentially has the entire goal to aim at and then skews it over the bar so West Ham very very fortunate to still be level in their game at half time I tell you there's another London club who'll probably be a little bit disappointed that they're level at half time that's Chelsea and uh, they're playing against Newcastle Rebecca Becca Adams, you've got an extended half time at this one. Eventually he's come round, hasn't it? <laughs> Eventually. Seven minutes of time added on at the end of the first half. At half time, it's Chelsea 1, Newcastle 1. The Chelsea fans were celebrating because they thought they'd gone ahead in the third or fourth minute of the match through who else? Cole Palmer, of course. But after a lengthy VAR check, that one was overturned, uh, ruled offside. He did have a hand, though, in Chelsea's opener. He passed a great ball from deep inside his own half that found Pedro Neto on the left who then crossed to Nicholas Jackson to put Chelsea in front on 18 minutes Newcastle's equaliser though it was well deserved because Sandro Tonali and Miguel Almiron had both been denied but then Alexander Isaac was well placed to tap in a great cross from Lewis Hall just a couple of minutes after that from close range and at the uh, that was at the half hour mark and then at half time yeah seven minutes added on and it's uh, one all here still waiting now for the second half to come but uh, Chelsea legends John Frank Zola and uh, uh, oh my god my mind has gone complete blank I'm so sorry uh, Florian Andre to uh, uh, Flo were introduced to the crowds there's plenty going on here and lots of entertainment there's always entertainment when Chelsea are involved aren't they because they you know they've essentially got this squad of players that they can play every three days don't they and that seems to be working for Enzo Maresca 
Yeah, I think so, Zoe. I mean, that's the thing. It's such a huge squad, and Zamarska just has such a wealth of talent to choose from. And you look at someone, a club like Newcastle, they really don't have the strength and depth that Chelsea do in attack either. And I think that's why they've been struggling as well in the last few games. So you would expect that Chelsea would be ahead. They will be a bit frustrated not to be, but Newcastle have been pretty decent in the second half of the first half. I'm just uh, one last question, Sorry. Rebecca. Sorry, because I know you do need to go get a, a, car, a half time tea or something. I saw a stat appear on the, uh, the sport website at the live feed uh, that Robert Sanchez's pass completion in this game is, is 50% and that's basically allowing Newcastle back into the game because if, if your goalkeeper is giving it to the opposition all the time or at least half the time then you can't really push forward and you're also giving Newcastle the ball in very very dangerous areas yeah, exactly, and Enzo Moresca has looked visibly annoyed when he's seen that. He turned around at one, po one point and punched his chair, so no doubt he'll be having strong words at half-time. But yeah, it's, uh, it's quite worrying if your goalkeeper is passing the ball continually back to the opposition. So let's see what happens in the second half, whether there's been a, a stern team talk on that. Rebecca, thank you very much for that half-time there between Chelsea and Newcastle. Lots of added time going on on the home of London football this afternoon. We had about six or seven minutes at Selhurst Park. We had a full seven minutes at Stamford Bridge. The earliest game that we uh, got half-time in was uh, West Ham against Manchester United. I still, I've said it three or four times already, I still cannot believe that Manchester United are not ahead yet in that game. But there's a big game that's coming up in around about an hour and a half's time um, on uh, in London. It's Arsenal against Liverpool at the top of the Premier League. Uh, big injury concerns for the Gunners. They're already without captain Martin Odegaard and defender William Saliba, who is suspended after getting sent off against Bournemouth last week. Mikel Arteta was questioned particularly about the fitness of Bukayo Saka, Ricardo Calafiori and Jurian Timber on Friday, none of whom trained that day. Will any of them be available today? He says he doesn't know. We're going to do our very best um, to somehow have them available, but obviously it's very, very uncertain. But if none of those three players play, then the Gunners will be without at least five regular starters this afternoon. The boss says he's not going to make any excuses, though, if they lose. I need to go on the hard drive, but I think we have <laughs> very, very difficult moments uh, or, or challenging moments. I don't think this is one of them. Yeah, we are so energized. You know, we play Liverpool at home, but really want to play. We have a magnificent squad. The atmosphere is going to be tremendous and uh, really looking forward to the game. Well, Harry Simi is at that one. We'll be chatting with him in, uh, well, after full time here uh, from full commentary between Crystal Palace and Tottenham Hotspur. The players are just going to come out. They're just coming out at the moment, actually. We'll get the team news from Harry from the Emirates in around about 10 or 15 minutes time. But let's go back to Selhurst Park where Ange Postacoglu, I can see, is just wandering back across to his technical area. Uh, he's got work to do in this second half to overturn that uh, half-time deficit and let's just cross very quickly to Steve Brown are you, are you surprised with what you've seen from Tottenham in this first half in that first half yeah I, I am I, I, I have to be honest with you the statistics of the heads ahead and where the two teams are confidence wise I expected this to be a much more dominant display from Spurs but you have to credit Crystal Palace with that I mean they've come out they certainly don't or haven't behaved like a team that's feeling sorry for itself um, th th their home form has been particularly poor they're finding it hard to score goals you wouldn't know that with the first half performance the, um, the way they've pressed has been particularly impressive but they looked a little bit shot shy if I'm honest even in that first half an hour with some really good positional um, situations they found themselves in but yeah I, I think it's finally poised still I've got to be honest with you Zav let's cross back to Andy Rowley and yourself Steve Brown Thanks very much, Zabi. Uh, welcome back, everyone, uh, for the second half of this Premier League encounter between Crystal Palace and Tottenham. The Eagles leading thanks to that goal from Jean-Philippe Mateta, his third of the Premier League season, fifth overall this campaign. And uh, Palace and Tottenham unchanged at the start of this uh, second half as Mitchell helps it on to uh, Eze, the former QPR player, trying to get away there from Romero. And... Uh, just glances at the referee as if to say, come on, he's holding me back. Gets the decision from uh, Darren Bond, who's now actually going to call uh, the defender over, I think, um, as he blows his whistle just to uh, have a word. He's actually pointing at Kuliseski now to say, get 10 yards. So he's uh, left that one alone now, and it'll be a 
free kick to Crystal Palace out on the left hand side Palace uh, if you weren't with us in the first half taking the lead through uh, Mateta um, but Tottenham hit the post through Johnson and also came very close through uh, Madison at the end of the uh, the first half pulling off a great save was Henderson in goes the free kick from Eze it's well wide at the near post though and it remains 1-0 to the Eagles Henderson in goal then for Palace uh, back three of Mark Gay Trevor Chalaba and Maxon Lacroix uh, they have uh, Daniel Munoz on a yellow card down the right Tarek Mitchell down the left uh, Jefferson Lerma actually had to go off during that first half so uh, that was a change during the first half but unchanged uh, since then Will Hughes is on the ball now he's the man who came on for Lerma He's alongside Adam Wharton in that midfield with Evere Eze and then Ismail Sar supporting Mateta up front. There's a cross in from the right from Munoz for the Colombian has just sliced that. With players making it into the box there, they'll be a bit disappointed. Oliver Glasner and his coaching staff that there wasn't a better cross coming in there for Tottenham. Vicario in goal, it's a back four of Pedro Porro, Romero, Van der Ven and Udogi. We've been guilty of giving the ball away at times in tight situations. Midfield of Basuma, Kulisevsky and Madison and then Johnson and uh, the teenager Mikey Moore either side of Solanke up front. Those three haven't got into the game enough as far as Tottenham are concerned so far. Wharton trying to battle Madison for the ball there but Tottenham have got it through Solanke. Sends it out to the right to Brennan Johnson. It's been in good form this season. Low cross. Here's Kulisevsky and another great save from Henderson. Got out to block that one low. It looked like Kulisevsky had a great chance there to turn that in but Henderson closed him down yeah and that's a real swift counter attack from Spurs this is what we were expecting on the turnover balls out to Johnson or to Moore on the left hand side quick breaks down in the channels but that was a ball fed to the near post it's an excellent save from Henderson again from Kulisevsky corner though for Tottenham two minutes gone in the second half 1-0 Palace lead in it goes towards the near post Gay heads it away Madison tries to bring it down now Mikey Moore he's going to chip it towards the back post Gay's there again under pressure from Johnson to try and head it away and he's seen that out for another corner to Tottenham Pedro Porro looks keen to get on with it yeah good recycling that and you, you know, when you put a ball back into the box with no pace on it it's very very difficult to clear out out of your penalty area pressurised well Spurs here comes the corner from the right Pedro Porro looking for Romero headed up in the air by uh, Crystal Palace it was Shalaba who got to it and uh, chance to clear it here for Munoz and there's been a goal right at the start of the second half at Stamford Bridge Chelsea against Newcastle that will be there in a second because here's Eze he's got away from his man Pedro Porro desperately trying to get back Eze scores and he's doubled the lead but the flag goes up the goalkeeper Vicario got something on it it wasn't enough it rolled over the line but it won't count and uh, Palace thinking they've got their second there and Eze just going too early from what we're seeing on the replay let's go to Stamford Bridge news of another goal Chelsea Newcastle Rebecca Adams yeah, it's Chelsea to Newcastle 1. I'd literally just sat down from getting my half-time cup of tea and the crowd were on their feet. Cole Palmer getting Chelsea off the mark early on in the second half. It was a lovely finish following a quick Chelsea break. Into the bottom left-hand corner, it's Chelsea 2 at Newcastle 1. Thank you, Rebecca. It does look like he's just gone. It's just a fraction, though. Early. They're virtually on the halfway line. We know about that high line from Tottenham. but Yeah, I mean, it is, it is a yard into the Spurs half. But what I would say is, in open play, in real time, that looked two yards offside. And it's not. We're talking about a leg. It's much tighter than you think. There's a player on the very far side. I think it's Udogi for Spurs, who's just drifted into his own half, only by half a yard. And Eze is maybe three quarters of a yard. That's how high the Spurs line is it's tighter than you thought it's, it's way tighter than I thought but it is offside and it just shows the pace of that Tottenham defence that Pedro Porro almost got back and he was giving Eze a three or four yard start there and they're on the halfway line so yeah. they, they play that way because he has such faith that they can yeah. get back even in those circumstances a absolutely you, you know and it catches a lot of teams out but we, we've Solanke breaking down the uh, right hand side for Tottenham he's trying to hook that back in but uh, it's gone out as Henderson catches it before it comes back into play and it will be a goal kick to uh, Crystal Palace who still have that 1-0 lead five minutes gone second half yeah but it's been a good start from them you, you know they've been on the front foot so, so I mean it's, it, we, we should get a really open competitive game here for 45 minutes Spurs need to find an equaliser if they do I, I do think the pendulum will swing very much in their favour but you know, Palace should make some dangerous on that counter they can soak up a little bit of pressure here and counter attack as the game goes on 
Last home win for Palace against Tottenham. September 21 under Vieira. Here goes Ismail Assar. Good looking cross here. Eze arrives. He had a heavy touch because he thought Borough was going to get to it, I think. Came off his shin, then tried to hook it back to a teammate. Cleared away by Tottenham. Gay trying to work the ball forward. Wins out and a bit of a wrestle there with Brennan Johnson. And they've got plenty in this attack. Palace, Mitchell's cross comes off the defender and then it's hooked away by Bissouma. Just looking to see if Costa Coglu will start looking towards his bench anytime soon. Because the pressure's growing actually. Palace look dangerous at the moment in the final third. Yeah, attacking wise you've got Richarlison, Bergval, Werner, Benton Kerr. Pape Saar made a big difference in that game against West Ham. There's a foul there over on the far side on uh, Hughes again I think uh, two in quick succession and it's a booking for Brennan Johnson first Tottenham player to go into the book yeah. John Munoz and it's, it is met with a giant cheer because the, the home fans have been wanting several I mean Solanke springs to mind with that shove and that push in the first first half but they've been well, there was one early on in the second half actually on the right hand side I, I think that was Porro they wanted booked as well so they've been on at the referee for quite some time and finally a yellow card has been brandished good game we're watching though now Steve it yeah. feels on a knife edge doesn't it really in terms of as you say Tottenham get the goal back swings big time given the the potency of their attack but Palace they could get that second goal and they might get a chance here with Saar pulling it back for Eze Eze trying to get it on his left foot skipping this way and that Eze is brilliant is that a penalty no says the referee Darren Bond Eze this will be VAR 100% it's going to be VAR but Eze they just couldn't get at him he kept moving it from left to right and eventually skipping forward onto his right foot about to unleash a shot goes down and was their contact that should have meant a penalty well Van der Ven's got an arm across him is there enough there I'm saying not enough there so holding back as he's trying to reach the ball to Look, you're, I, think, you're, I think you're like right Steve you're, de you're desperate it. as a centre half to make the block there you don't want to go 2 nil down one arm across one, yeah. someone's chest it wasn't a push it's, enough. it's an arm yeah. to protect space I don't think you'll see the referee that's very good refereeing he had a good long look at it as well Wharton back to the corner taker Hughes he's lofted one up to the back post keeper hasn't held it Vicario but he gets it at the second attempt and now they're breaking and it's Kuliseski out on the right hand side he's got Mikey Moore and Adogi racing forward to try and help him Madison busting a gut as well but Wharton who went back there to try and stop anything on the break has just managed to get that away and then a foul on Eze as he's breaking out he points to the referee just to say yeah you give it now and now he's floated one over the top looking for Saar it's headed away by Van der Ven and uh, well there's a huge game in the Premier League coming up at 4.30 Arsenal against Liverpool let's get the team news for that one from Harry Simeon Mikel Arteta has included both Jurian Timber and Bukayo Saka in the starting 11 for Arsenal. So they line up with Raya in goal. Partey, White, Gabriel and Timber at the back line. Rice, Marino and Trossard will be the midfield with Saka, Martinelli and Havertz in attack. Just waiting for confirmation on the Liverpool team. But the big news for Arsenal is that both Bukayo Saka and Jurian Timber start for the Gunners. Thank you, uh, Harry. I can hear uh, thousands upon thousands of Arsenal fans breathing a sigh of relief at that news as Mikey Moore into the penalty area for Tottenham gets it to Kulusevski, the Sweden international, plays it square. This is Madison trying to hit the top corner. Uh, goalkeeper is always moving that way. Henderson and makes a comfortable save in the end as he moves towards his left post. Yeah, brilliant counter-attack again and for a moment they had the numerical advantage but the po pass sideways from Moore to Kulusevski slowed that all up. Palace got behind the ball, fed back to Madison, and he had time to pick his spot. You could see what he was going for. He got the power, but it was a little bit too central, and it was a comfortable save for Henderson. But, I'm, I mean, it, uh, the, the thing is with Spurs, they look so you know, dangerous at times when they play quickly through the lines that they will get opportunities, but it's just whether they can keep Palace out. The tackle from Hughes, it's run here for Mitchell. In comes a cross, deflects off the defender, Romero, and it's a corner to Crystal Palace. Yeah. And look at Mateta trying to lift the crowd in the Homesdale. 
Yeah, and it's so end to end now. It's, it, it's gone from ridiculously poor in the first half hour to a really exciting open game that's end to end. And I, I can't believe this is going to finish 1 0. From what we've seen unfold in front of us, Tottenham are taking risks to try and get that goal back, knowing there'll be a momentum swing, but they're leaving themselves wide open. And at the moment, you're just waiting for one of them to score, and then we'll decide what way the game's going to go. <laughs> Still only one clean sheet in London derbies in the Premier League under Ange Postacoglu. It's 15, uh, 16 games now. Here comes the cross uh, from the corner from Eze. Short comes back to him. Uh, the Greenwich-born midfielder just holding his uh, spot at the moment because he's tried to just uh, tease Madison on which foot he's going to send this in. He finally gets the cross in right-footed. They spent about five seconds there just uh, faced up to each other. As now it's chipped forward again to Eze. Eze's cross comes off a defender. Saar on the turn. Hits it right footed. Kept out by Vicario. Munoz has hit it over the bar. And it remains 1 0 to Palace. Yeah, Vicario driving the wrong way. Dives to his left. Saves it with his feet. And so it's not leaving a charm life, the Spurs goal. But Palace are ranking up the pressure and the chances. It takes a little deflection. That's why he saved it with his feet, Vicario. It's back with him now, Vicario sending it forward, the Italian, and uh, a real battle there between Lacroix and uh, Solanke. Um, Solanke goes to ground with no free kick, and it's Palace sending it forward again through Henderson, the former Manchester United goalkeeper who is at Sheffield United and Forest, of course, on loan in the Premier League. Chalaber moves that ball back in field. Mikey Moore's gone down under a challenge from uh, Wharton, but there's no foul. And uh, Mitchell in field to Eze. Eze, left-footed cross, looking for Munoz, who's broken into the penalty area. Tottenham deal with it, get it away as far as Madison. Low slung running style, he's tried to clear that left foot and it's come off a Palace player and it's Saar into the box for Munoz. Munoz sweeps it across the penalty area and it's headed down. Eze! Oh, he sliced it wide! And as Steve says, they really are racking up the chances. Headed back into the uh, area around the penalty spot and Eze has it dropped to his right foot and sliced it wide. Yeah, Munoz getting a lot of joy down this right hand side as a wing back for Palace. Delivers the ball across, cushion back into the path of Eze, slices it wide. I can't believe Postecoglou is not looking to make a substitution or two. That ball out from Madison earlier that got intercepted. Solanke trying to get onto this ball forward and he's one out there against Lacroix. He's on the edge of the penalty area. He uh, darts towards the byline. Lacroix sticks to his task and he's got a left foot to that. And it's behind for a Tottenham corner. Yeah, and as you say, Steve, you've got that pressure of Palace. Now we're back up the other end. Yeah. Tottenham got a corner. Yeah, that, that, that back line of Palace has dealt with Solanke particularly well. They've snuffed him out. It's been difficult for him as a lone striker, but Lacroix seems to have the measure of him physically. And if he tries to take him on, Lacroix seems to win that one, one battle. Here comes the corner in front of the away Tottenham fans. It's floated in and uh, Wharton, oh, he's clipped that straight up in the air towards his own goal. That wasn't the uh, best bit of defending from the former Blackburn midfielder, but they've got away with it. And now Munoz is breaking away and he's done brilliantly there. Now he tries to spread it towards Eze as it comes back onto his left foot under pressure from Basuma. Romero now challenging Hughes, has won that ball back and it's played into the path of Solanke, but just too far in front. And Lacroix on the turn is able to clip that ball forward. The former Wolfsburg defender who was uh, known to the manager. <laughs> Not one very subtle from Kulisevsky there on Hughes. Him, didn't he? Yeah, the, the one before where the Palace fans wanted a foul on Hughes wasn't a foul. It was a brilliant challenge, but that one was blatant. Eze coming forward down the left for Palace. Just sent it down the touchline for Mitchell. Mitchell pulling it back, but no one quite arriving there uh, for Palace. Basuma was there to pick up uh, that ball back. Richarlison and Werner are about to come on. Pape Sar as well, as uh, yeah. the manager has decided, right, we need to, we need I, to do I something did, now. I did wonder, and, you, you know, it's not quite happening but that was, I was going back to that ball out from Madison earlier it got intercepted but Mikey Moore was on the left hand side and for some reason I, I think it was Chalabar went in front to intercept and there was 60 yards of space over the top and if the ball had made it Moore was away 1v1 Madison up the left to Mikey Moore maybe a last chance for him to impress if he's one of the ones to go off you think Werner might come on there and uh, Munoz does well to win that ball off Moore Richarlison um, being ready and Saar will come on in that midfield as well 
as uh, Romero clears the ball up in the air. Wharton battling for it with Udogi and there's going to be a free kick to uh, Tottenham. And then Palace are going to be... The choir's going to be carded there for kicking that ball away, but the whistle had gone literally yeah. half a second, milliseconds really, before. Harsh. Um, very harsh. He had to commit to that, I felt, anyway. But uh, he is another player to go in the book. Well, while these substitutions are being made, uh, Madison's one of the ones to make way on his 200th Premier League appearance. He'll come off the side. Let's go to uh, Stamford Bridge, shall we, first, uh, to uh, find out the, uh, the latest in the second half between Chelsea and Newcastle with Rebecca Adams. Yeah, it's Chelsea 2, Newcastle 1. The home side are in total control. And since you last crossed me, Pedro Neto has hit the post. Hasn't added to Chelsea's goal tally, though, but you get the sense it's coming. It's Chelsea 2, Newcastle 1. So Chelsea in front in that one. And uh, while they're making the third change here, more is coming off for Werner. Let's go to London Stadium. West Ham against Manchester United. Nick Godwin. West Ham nil, Manchester United nil. We've played for just over an hour, and West Ham, having made three changes at halftime, are much more into it. They've actually created a chance. Emerson trying to backheel the ball inside the six-yard box from Antonio Cross. He couldn't make appropriate contact. Max Kilman has just headed wide from six yards as well. And Manchester United look a little bit devoid of confidence. The Hammers much better, and actually starting to create opportunities. But still, West Ham nil, Manchester United nil. Thanks very much indeed, Nick. Commentary continues on that game on the BBC Sport website as uh, Henderson comes out to uh, get to a ball over the top from Tottenham just before the substitute Werner can get to it. He's come on for Mikey Moore. Saar's come on in the midfield for Kulusevski and uh, Richarlison has come on for Madison. Now a ball for Mateta to chase. Uh, Vicario's come a long way. Flag has gone up anyway for a free kick for the offside. And uh, Tottenham can get going again what do you make of the changes first Steve yeah I, I, I think changes need to be made I, I can see why Moore was brought off on, on this left hand side look he's going to be an exciting talent but as Bradley Allen was saying before the game the brutality of the Premier League and the quality that he has to get in front means that if you're not absolutely on it you're going to get pulled as a youngster and he's making way for Werner they need to get back into this game Spurs and at the moment they are having one or two opportunities, but you have to say the better chances are falling to Palace. You know, so if, if they weren't creating opportunities, Palace, you'd say, OK, I might give us a little bit more time, we're starting to get on top, but they're not. They're leaving themselves wide open for that counter. So they've got to start taking control of, of, of creating opportunities without leaving themselves too wide open. So I understand the changes. Um, three in the same uh, you know, substitution means that you can make one or two more, isn't it? Yeah. As uh, Tottenham have a chance with Werner to flick it down the right for Johnson arriving. Gets to the byline, his cross comes off Mark Gay and he can bring the ball away. The England centre-half. That was odd. That was a 70-yard punt from Vicario from Werner coming in off the left hand. Mateta looking for the flick on, Sarge trying to get away here. And Van der Ven has possibly brought him down there as the last man. What's the referee going to decide here? He's reaching into his pocket. Well, maybe because he was edging away towards the uh, side of the penalty area, he's going to say yellow card because uh, Van der Ven, who's got all that pace, was wrong side there and Saar was breaking away. He's gone down, the former Watford winger, and it's a yellow card and a free kick to Crystal Palace. What do you make of that, Steve? <laughs> years um, yeah I look he's got caught wrong side and he blindsided from the run it's a wonderful flick on excellent pace caught him out but as he deliberately pulled him back would be what I'd said or is it just a little coming together of bodies they're both honestly trying to drive towards the football to get there first I'm always going to go with the centre half Andy you know that <laughs> he's going towards the corner flag as well isn't he uh, so, well, so the chance of him to be able to like, get I, back on goal maybe I always think if, if he's tripped him on purpose or he's pulled him back on purpose I, I get it but that was a, more of a coming together of two bodies crossing over they didn't neither want wanted to give anything in terms of getting to the ball first seeing a real slow down oh, no, we're seeing an opportunity but yeah I, I, I see why the referee's chosen yellow not red on that one Oh, we're going back to the penalty. Yeah, there was ever so... OK. Well, the shout for the penalty, which wasn't given when Van der Ven just gets his arm across uh, as a... I could see what you were saying on that one, Steve, as well, but the, the, yeah. the fact was that Eze was denied the opportunity to actually reach the ball um, yeah. because of that arm across I'm, him. And, you, so. know when, you know when you... You know, I'm, I, I sit here and I watch that and I, 
I'm not saying what I've said is completely 100% right. It's your it's your instant take on it. As yeah. a defender, you're scrambling, you get your arm in here, you're doing everything you can to stop that shot coming away from your team going 2-0 down. But if that had been given, I think you could have gone, yeah, arm across the chest. Yeah. So it's one of those ones where you're just with the ref on the day. And it's, you know, we often hear it's a contact sport and there's a certain amount of contact which yeah. is, uh, but, I guess, allowed with a... I, I know what it feels like when you're scrambling across the 18-yard box as a centre-half and you're desperately just trying to get something in the way of a shot or, you know, it's a tough one. And I, but I do think he's probably, like, I think the referee's got both those decisions right. Ismail Asar is making way uh, for Eddie and Ketia. Asar is getting a great reception and uh, Mateta actually was almost the cheerleader there. He was uh, encouraging the Palace fans to really give him a great response. He just seemed to uh, tweak his hamstring a little bit, maybe um, trying to break after that one when he went down under the pressure from Van der Ven. But I hope there's nothing too serious about that. Palace's next game is at Aston Villa on Wednesday in the League Cup. But they've got this free kick which they're concentrating on right now. They lead 1-0. 66 minutes on the clock. It's going to be Hughes to back heel it to Eze. He's going to drill a shot saved by Vicario. That's a scuffed shot as it came out to Chalaba who's got his head in his hands now. The flag goes up anyway. And uh, Tottenham breathe again. Yeah, I like the free kick. I look for the world that Hughes was going to deliver left footed across the back of that Tottenham high defensive line and they just touched it to where they took a first touch in front of him very good powerful strike but straight down the throat of Vicario centre of the goal no more than knee height punched it back out into the middle of the well just to the right of the six yard box three Palace players in offside position Tottenham chasing the game it's Brennan Johnson trying to send the ball forward but too far beyond Solanke, Richarlison and Werner. And that's the first sign of frustration I've seen from Ange Postacoglu. He actually brought his hands out of his pocket. Wow. And raised them a little bit as yeah. if to say, come on. We haven't seen him uh, really take his hands out of his pockets. So I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a massive amount of movement, if I'm honest. But it was in that. It's more than he's shown. That ball forward past Mateta and through to the goalkeeper, Vicario. And Tottenham can move the ball out of defence. And upfield through Udogi, Solanke, crunch and tackle coming in from Wharton, but it might flick up in the air and break for Werner. Werner playing it back into the midfield, Pape Sarr is there, he gets it up the left, Palace still have a man down, in comes the cross, oh and the goalkeeper Henderson just got to that as Brennan Johnson is darting into the box, into the six yard box, and it's uh, Munoz who's still down. Yeah, I, I, again it's, it's one of those ones where just holding his mouth yeah referees allow play to go on because he, um, technically it's probably more of a, a an arm across yeah he takes one across the chin actually from Richarlison again he can't pull out of that so it's momentum that takes him into Munoz but it is a full forearm across the across the chin which we which he will feel but that ball across from the left had no pace on it you yeah. know so very very difficult for anybody to make a run when there's a lack of pace you, you need it you need to be cut back a little bit more from that left hand side a little bit of a waste great touch from Munoz as that ball was sent forward by Henderson brilliant control and now it's Nketiah cross from the right it's low doesn't quite reach for Teta because uh, Romero is there and then the doggy has been caught there by uh, Munoz as he was trying to get onto that ball that broke back his way and uh, He's up quite quickly, the doggy, but it's a free kick to Tottenham yeah. into their penalty area. And it is, it is, it's tip for tack. What we saw Munoz just take across his cheekbone is exactly what Munoz has just delivered to Udogi. So, you know, it, you know, it was led with an arm. It caught Udogi across the cheekbone and we get on with it. Chalaba with a great challenge and then Wharton playing it forward. Felt there was a uh, touch of a Tottenham player as it went out over the goal line, but uh, it's a goal kick given yep. by the referee. We were heavily critical about the first half an hour, but this has turned into a proper London derby. Thank goodness. Yeah. Uh, that was uh, hard trucking that first half hour, but uh, yeah, you're right, Steve. This has been excellent since then. As the ball goes out for a throw in off Pedro Porro. Crystal Palace with Mitchell on that left-hand side, sending it down the touchline to Mateta, the uh, 
Frenchman trying to hold off the defender. But uh, Tottenham get out there under pressure from Eze. And another crunching tackle coming in from Hughes. But it's still Spurs coming forward. And then Munoz brilliantly in intercepting there as that ball was destined to uh, reach Werner if he missed it. Now Eze. Wonderful feat there um, as Basuma came across to close him down. But uh, the foul had already been given. Mitchell, uh, the uh, player fouled by uh, Tottenham and it's going to be a free kick to Palace just inside the Spurs half again very similar to the, the Madison pass earlier where the, they, they're in off the shoulder you've just got to clear the line and, and Spurs couldn't find the pass to clear that defensive line to put Werner away on this left hand side and it was easily intercepted but that's what I'm saying about Spurs today they've had moments where they're in great positions they're just finding it difficult at times to play the right pass you don't even need to be too accurate on that one just clear the back line there's 50 yards of space behind to work in as a Lacroix trying to flick that ball into the box it didn't quite come off and now Tottenham can break with Udogi that's another great bit of play in the midfield uh, from Palace who all day have read the passes intercepted broken it up it was Wharton that time who had a little punch of the air didn't he yeah, uh, yeah, to yeah. celebrate that interception Solanke trying to play that forward and uh, now cleared away upfield by Henderson as uh, Saar gets it to uh, Bissouma, he's under pressure from Palace but gets it to a doggy. will be across to the London Stadium in a moment as Tottenham try and come forward but it's a throw in and we will go to London Stadium, it's uh, maybe got even worse for Eric Ten Hag, West Ham, Manchester United, Nick Goldman. West Ham 1, Manchester United nil. Crescencio Somerville has put the hammers in front and opened his Premier League account. Jared Bowen made progress down the right, got the cross in. Danny Ings swung a boot at it, completely miscued it. But Somerville dashed in at the far post to score the first goal of the game. Manchester United missed all these chances and now they're behind. West Ham 1, Manchester United nil. Well, that could be a huge goal for both those clubs. Uh, live commentary continues with BBC Radio London on the BBC Sport website. Nick Goblin alongside Bradley Allen. The closing stages of that one. We've got 18 minutes plus stoppage time to go here at Selhurst Park. Richarlison breaking into the box there, trying to chase a uh, ball forward. But uh, the defender, Lacroix, dealing with that. And it's uh, going to be a goal kick he's, to Crystal Palace. He's played well today, Lacroix. Yeah. I mean, I thought that was a impressed. wonderful through ball. And Richarlison taking it on the run across his body. And the choir just nips inside and tidies it up. Yeah, I think he's had a very good game in the centre half for Palace. Mateta battling in the air for that ball uh, forward from Henderson. Van der Ven wins the header and it's out for a throw in to Palace on their right hand side. And Munoz, the Colombian, will take it. So a slightly dodgy throw in. They usually uh, do much about them these days, but uh, gets away with it and it's going to be a, another throw in on this right hand side <laughs> I wonder if his manager just mentioned that to him I don't think so it's probably something else but uh, just had a very quick word there in his ear to Munoz and then uh, Chalaba from the throw in sends it miles in the air comes down on the edge of the Tottenham penalty area Mitchell uh, tries to keep the pressure on and then it's uh, hooked clear by uh, Pedro Porro Lacroix underneath it heads it down to Gay he's been uh, caught out there in position by Brennan Johnson and the former Nottingham Forest player is forward towards the byline trying to get the cross in Gay gets back comes off him and then Munoz has to try and clear this just over the head of Basuma uh, and then a good challenge from Anketia as they were trying to break out their palace but Tottenham regained possession very quickly now out to the right from uh, Pape Sarr it's back at his feet again square to uh, Bissouma now Udogi again and Werner Werner in the orange boots darting towards the byline cross blocked by Munoz and uh, then came back off the, uh, the German by the looks of things it's going to be a goal kick to Crystal Palace I uh, watched him in the week, uh, Steve, on Thursday, and the amount of times he gets into these great positions and doesn't happen. Just doesn't score like these great opportunities. Doesn't uh, you know create the uh, goal-scoring opportunity? He's um, someone that they've gone back to after, like you know, the, obviously the second half of last season on loan, and uh, I was surprised because you can see there's a player there, but he just doesn't seem to have the belief at those key moments sometimes. Yeah, and he'll feel that as well. Andy, the more it happens, the more you'll feel it. And it, confidence is a wonderful thing to have, but once you haven't got it, it's oh, very yeah. difficult to get back. Yeah. 
here comes across looking for Richarlison I think it's gone straight across uh, both Solanke and uh, Richarlison who kicks the hoardings in frustration sticks his tongue out and uh, he'll plod back that you, you, wasn't you, that bad a uh, cross actually Richarlison well it's just bounced up too yeah. high for him it's it's an in-between cross it, it, if Richard, you've got to read that the, the two people in front of you are not going to get a header on it so you've then got to anticipate where it's going to fall he doesn't and it bounces and once it bounces it's really difficult to, to, to get the right part of your body on to the end of that but yeah the, 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 the quality moments that Spurs have had in the final third they found Henderson in very very good form um, but too too often today they've, they've not linked up well enough in the final third on that final ball or that final cross that ball just behind uh, a teammate from Mateta but it might break in the midfield but Sars just a bit too quick for Hughes who's hacked him down that'll be a booking all day long free kick to Tottenham in the centre circle let's cross to uh, Stamford Bridge it's been another big opportunity in the game between Chelsea and Newcastle Rebecca Adams yeah, well, it's still Chelsea 2, Newcastle 1. And how Newcastle haven't found the equaliser, I don't know. Because Robert Sanchez was way off his line. There was bad communication amongst the Newcastle attack. And a golden opportunity missed. Eddie Howe will be fuming because Newcastle should have equalised. That was a very, very good opportunity for them. But it's Chelsea 2, Newcastle 1. Chelsea and uh, Newcastle. Two teams who... Uh start of the season would have definitely felt they'd be vying for the same sort of uh, part of the table Chelsea have made a slightly better start Newcastle still in there though as Pedro Porro just straight into an offside position there as he was uh, the ball was headed down to him he decided he couldn't go for it because of that and uh, in the end Richarlison can't reach the uh, the ball as it bounced across and Munoz can see it out for a goal kick to Palace who still lead 1-0 as they desperately look for this first and, and, league win and of the there season. lies your conundrum because on the sidelines now you're starting to think about the game a little bit more defensively if you Glasner to see out the 1-0 they've had multiple opportunities in the second half to increase that lead to 2 which would have given them a lovely little cushion but you know how I, I know how players brains go when you haven't won in 8 and you're leading in the last 15 plus add-ons you start to drop a bit deeper you start to protect that lead you're not as you know, you're not as assertive in the final third where you're pressing because you don't want to get played through. And so you end up dropping a little bit deeper and inviting pressure. Loose pass from Wharton, doesn't find Hughes. Saar on the ball for Tottenham. Laying it out to the right in front of Pedro Porro. Mitchell goes across to try and close him down. Eze's back there as well. Comes back though for uh, Spurs to Saar. He's going to try and flick it off the outside of his boot, edge of the box. And uh, Lacroix will see that back to his goalkeeper. Henderson yeah. and there's a prime example of that every single outfielder within 25 yards of their own goal line having said that he, he brought on Nketiah when he could have maybe you know brought on a slightly yeah, more defensive player yeah no that, that so that's from his perspective I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go defensive but as a player out there I can tell you yeah. you know as a centre half you start to drop a little bit deeper and we've seen Nketiah is playing you know way back in his half most of the time isn't he yeah. as Werner breaks down the left hand side Munoz is uh, trying to close him down in comes the cross headed away by Mark Gay comes out to Eze Eze forward looking for Mateta Mateta trying to hold off the defender Romero brilliant strength to try and outmuscle Mateta there and then the ball flicked forward by Solanke Henderson will pick it up there's a man down Wharton needs to uh, stretch off some cramp and there's been another goal at London Stadium West Ham Manchester United Nick Godwin it's 1-1 Manchester United have equalised with nine minutes to go through Casemiro a corner wasn't dealt with it was sent back into the danger zone Joshua Zerzi has come on headed powerfully towards goal and Casemiro by the line couldn't miss flicks in for the equaliser West Ham 1 Manchester United 1 thank you Nick uh, here at Selhurst it's 1-0 to Crystal Palace against Tottenham a team that Palace have had a wretched record against in the Premier league era all told but they uh, have this 1-0 lead as things stand um, on the bench for Palace still uh, Matt Turner who wasn't involved in the squad at Forest uh, due to being ineligible Joel Ward, uh, Jeff Schlutt, Nathaniel Klein, Daichi Kamada, uh, Caleb Kapora and Asha Aginode and uh, for Tottenham Fraser Forster, Radu Dragosin, Archie Gray, Lucas Bergval. Uh, Rodrigo Bentonker and Ben Davis are the players that could still potentially come on. 
Yeah. Wharton is uh, having to go over to the touchline after receiving a little bit of treatment there. Yeah, he's, he's calves have given up on him and he's got cramp. The Charlottesons um, having a bit of a, a pop as he quite often does, um, saying, "Come on, let's get on with it." And uh, yeah, that's what Tottenham need now. They really need to lift that tempo as much as they can. Yeah, uh, uh, incredibly, I would I would still say that we've just clicked over 80 minutes. If Spurs found a goal now, I still wouldn't put it past them finding a second. But it's it's like I said, the mentality out on the pitch starts to shift if you're one nil up into a more defensive mentality. And uh, I was at a game recently when uh, Tottenham scored two very late goals against Coventry that got them through in the League Cup. They've got Man City. Um, in the week, it's Wednesday night. Uh, you'll be able to hear that one uh, the BBC Radio London on Wednesday evening, alongside the uh, game for Palace up at uh, Aston Villa, which will uh, finish before that Tottenham game against Man City is uh, done. So we'll cross over straight to uh, Tottenham Man City once uh, Palace's game at Villa is over. And we'll be at Brentford on Tuesday evening in the League Cup as well as we bring you more live football on the home of London Sport. Here's Nketiah breaking into the Tottenham penalty area. Former Arsenal forward who will be desperate to score in this one, you'd think. In comes the cross, headed away by Van der Ven. Out as far as Hughes. Now Wharton, teeing it up for a right-footed drive. It's a brilliant hit and a great save from Vicario who poured it away, left hand to it. It was definitely going in inside his left post. A brilliant hit from Wharton. Yeah, a great strike and an even better save away to his left. You think it's beaten him actually and then right at the last second he throws that left arm up. And it's a good hand, a real good solid left hand that pushes it wide for the corner and that would have been game done and dusted. Vicario keeping Spurs within striking distance with that save. That's his swinger, isn't it, Wharton? I mean, that was some hit. He really caught that brilliantly. He was gutted. It didn't go in. Here's Hughes with the corner, punched by Vicario, who had another chance for Wharton, this time on the left foot, but uh, it's gone well over as it dropped to him on the edge of the penalty area. And it's a goal kick to uh, Tottenham. Yeah, you, you, you've got to swing for nothing there because you just can't get caught in possession. You can't let it get blocked. So you, you, you're half volleying with power. It doesn't really matter where it ends up. In fact, up in the stands, not the worst thing in the world if it's not going to go in the back of the net. Winless in four at home in the league this season, Palace, and uh, failing to score in three of those four games, but they've scored yeah. today, and Odd they're ahead. Oddly, I've seen them at Chelsea this year, where they were battered for 45 minutes, but then were a the better team for 45 minutes and deserved a draw in the end, and today, where they've been terrific. Like, to me, what I've seen, eight, eight without a win doesn't make sense, but I think I've seen the best probably performance today and the best half at Chelsea. Well, the crowd aren't happy with uh, how that free kick was taken there. Van der Ven has uh, taken it from, I guess, not where they expected it should be taken from, but the referee has allowed play to continue, and Romero will play it to his centre-half partner, Van der Ven. Up the left, they'll go to Udogi, just inside the Palace half of the field. Now Van der Ven, that's a great pass to uh, Werner, who's trying to get away here from Munoz, who slid in there and got the ball. Well, he took a gamble there on a booking, but uh, the Colombian is done well, now Chalaba's down having been caught after the ball had been played forward to Mateta and it's a free kick to Crystal Palace as yeah. Richarlison again is uh, furious he's been booked <laughs> <laughs> you say it like it's, it was a given Yeah. Um, I'd like to see a challenge on Werner again, I thought that was from the wrong side, Yeah. you know very game of Munoz but uh, my heart was in my mouth as far as he was concerned yeah. I think that was, um, I think could easily I don't be know if referees yellow. take any notice of that, you know, I, you know, but it's certainly when you're challenging from the wrong side, if you I'm just seeing another replay now, did he get enough on the ball there? If he doesn't, then it's a real tough decision the referee's got to make. Yeah, he definitely took a gamble though because um, a slight touch from the Tottenham player and he's he's gone there. I think Munoz having gone off the, the ground, off his feet. Um, anyway, uh, looked like Ryan Mason might have been booked there, uh, one of the Tottenham coaching staff. Um, another one who wasn't happy with the decision along with Richarlison Benton Kerr is about to come on for Spurs at the next break in play but it's uh, Vicario playing out from the uh, the back Basuma he's been caught by Nketiah um, in terms of Nketiah's won the ball but it rolls to uh, Saar and Tottenham can continue the attack and Eze 
desperately trying to go with Pedro Porro. The cross comes in. It's a flick by Lacroix just before it can reach Richarlison and Werner will get onto it. Plays it back to his centre-half Van der Ven. Now Basuma. Yeah, I mean, look how deep they are. Every player behind the ball. Mateta, 15 yards into his, 20 yards into his own half now. Five minutes plus added time to go here. Palace leading against Tottenham. Looking for a rare victory against the Lily Whites. 2021, the last time they uh, won against Tottenham. I think that's the only win in the last six or seven. There's Solanke trying to get away down the right-hand side. Uh, sliding tackle from Lacroix, and it's out for a throw into Spurs out on that right-hand side. Yeah, I think he's been absolutely superb in that back line. I think he's been the best of the three defenders by some distance. Here comes the uh, change, Benton Kerr is coming on for Basuma, who uh, gets over the line on the far side of the field as quickly as possible to uh, not waste any time for Spurs. This throw in right in front of those away fans. As Tottenham running out of time here to try and keep up momentum in the Premier League. Ball forward to Richarlison. He tries to help it on to a teammate, but Palace sliding in to try and win that there off uh, Solanke. Who hasn't got much change out of those centre-halves, as you said, Steve. They've marshalled him pretty well, haven't they? Yeah, he's found it difficult today, actually, to, to, to get into this game. I can't really recall him having too many opportunities. But they have struggled at times. I said, when they've created a chance, we've had Madison with a superb effort in the first half. Um, we saw the post hit from Johnson in the first half as well. And then we had that chance early in the second half. We could have said to get the near post where Henderson made that save. But for the amount of possession they've had, for the amount of times they've been on the break, they've not created enough today. Bernardo comes on for Werner. Uh, sorry, for uh, Wharton in the uh, Palace midfield. Wharton just ran out of steam there, didn't he? You mentioned yeah. uh, he was cramping up the ball out from Palace drop for Eze just outside the Tottenham penalty he's going to try and uh, clip that straight away looking to try and loop it over the goalkeeper but um, I mean, players make it into the box there yeah, but it's a waste isn't it I know it takes well, a bit it, of time look, Steve, it, it's a long right so we're 87 clicking over to 88 minutes and it drops to Eze it's a great first touch can we drift into the corner do you yeah. start knocking off minutes off the clock now you haven't won this season to cross it behind the goal and give Spurs a goal kick I think is madness in that situation ball out to uh, the left for Tottenham they're running out of time fast here as Saar brings it forward across the halfway line gives it to a doggy back with Saar again the Senegalese international gives it to Benton Kerr who's on now uh, his ball forward blocked by Hughes but goes straight back to Saar he's run into trouble and Nketiah that's a lovely little pass for Mateta great layoff here for Crystal Palace to Kamara he's going to get it forward down that left hand side to uh, Eze as a going back in field he's got three Tottenham players around him but still manages to dink it down the line to Mitchell as a again just outside the box Kamada showing for him but as they will just hold on to it and it's such a, a gift for his team at this stage of the match that's a clever pass from Lacroix down the left hand side of Mitchell now as a wonderful swivel on the edge of the box it will break there uh, for Kamada perhaps but Romero quickly onto it and wins it back for Tottenham who've dragged a lot of players back there as Solanke now tries to break forward he's away from Will Hughes bursting down the right can he pick out a cross here for Richarlison no the block again from Lacroix yeah. who must be uh, close to man of the match at yeah. Crystal Palace today he's going to be up there isn't Plenty he of options he's going to be up there I, th I thought the cross should have come in early Werner yeah. had got goal side of Munoz Munoz caught wrong side but he was looking at Richarlison Solanke and uh, he needed a cross that quick early and to the far post it looked really good at that stage didn't it but um, by the time Lacroix got across the, the avenue was really restricted we've got 20 seconds before we find out how much injury time there's going to be and here is Benton Kerr for Tottenham who trail Palace late in this game Selhurst Park into Doggy now and back to Saar on the edge of the penalty area back to Van der Ven squares it Romero Benton Kerr again, sending it out to the right touchline. 
Here comes the cross, flicks up off Mitchell, headed by Richarlison, drops to Nick and Ketir on the header. Then uh, a shot comes in from Benton Kerr, comes off Kamada, headed away again by Hughes. And Palace really are all hands to the pump at the moment. Let's go to London Stadium. West Ham against Manchester United. Nick Aldwin. West Ham 2, Manchester United 1. Jared Bowen has just converted a penalty after VAR called David Coote to the monitor. It was a foul by De Ligt on Ings. It looked very marginal. It took forever. There was a heck of a row and it was awarded. There'll be a heck of a row after this game. But West Ham back in front. We're playing the third of 12 minutes of stoppage time. West Ham 2, Manchester United 1. Thank you, Nick. 12 minutes to be added there. We've just got into stoppage time here. Werner's cross and Henderson just about holds it with Brennan Johnson and Richarlison both loitering with intent to score. But uh, Henderson just holds it. Yeah, they've done the... I mean, it's a really good cross, middle of six, and you've got Solanke running across the near and Richarlison staying, staying far. It's a decent ball, and you just want one of your strikers attacking the middle of the six, really. They split themselves near and far. Ball in between both, collected by Henderson. I think it was only three minutes to be added here, Steve, so it looks like very much time running out here for Tottenham against Crystal Palace, who are desperately trying to get across the line here in this one for their first league win of the season. It's flicked in field by Spurs, but uh, Hughes is there, and he will just try and hold it but Solanke has nipped in on the blind side and won that back he sent it forward looking for Richarlison but it's rolled beyond the Brazilian and through to uh, Dean Henderson that kind of sums it up a little bit and potential break ball over here straight through to Henderson and I think that could be your lot but hearing VR's, VAR's checking a uh, possible penalty at Stamford Bridge as well as the uh, ball is up towards uh, the Crystal Palace centre forward Mateta one back by Odogi and it is opening up here for Tottenham for one last break perhaps it's Solanke he's got support from Pedro Porro and Brennan Johnson on the right it's Johnson down the line for Pedro Porro in comes the cross it's behind four Tottenham players who've got into the box there and what a touch that is from Eze to take another Tottenham player out of the defensive operation he's moved it out to the right to Anketia and Ketia cutting in field well they don't want to uh, maybe go for the shot here it's been worked into the box though by uh, Eze it's uh, Solanke uh, trying to get back to help out his team in fact we've got seven to be added here at uh, Selhurst Park yeah, a so, bit of uh, a misinformation there from yeah, from, from a colleague got a, steer, uh, a bomb steer as they call it but, uh, so still Another four minutes to be added here and Tottenham still feel that they have the opportunity to maybe get a late equaliser here. It's Benton Kerr on the ball. Gives it to Saar. Benton Kerr again. With Doggy. And then to Romero across the Stamford Bridge in a, in a moment. Let's go there now. Quickly to Chelsea Newcastle, Rebecca Adams. Yes, Chelsea 2, Newcastle 1, six minutes of time added on, we're in the 93rd minute at the minute, Chelsea have just had a penalty appeal turned down after a VAR check, Nicholas Nkunku was brought down in the area, it looked like he brought himself down to be honest, no penalty for Chelsea and there are around about three minutes remaining. Thanks very much Rebecca, here's Udogi for Tottenham, crosses headed away by the uh, defender Chalaba, now it's looped forward for Mateta to chase, he's going to try and get there just before Van der Ven and he manages it, now he's going to try and hold the ball in the Tottenham half of the field, the tall French forward just helps it down the line and he's just brought a few more precious seconds there for Crystal Palace, but the job not done yet. Tottenham have it with Romero, waving his teammates forward. Great noise from the Crystal Palace fans. They've won the ball back again in the midfield, and it's played forward to Eze. Only Romero to beat back there. Richarlison trying to get back to, and Romero, the World Cup winner, with an excellent tackle there to win the ball back and just about keep Tottenham in it. <laughs> yeah, Eze's trying to put him off balance, swinging one way, then dropping his shoulder, going the other. Romero defended that superbly well. Never took his eye off the ball, never went for the body movement. Lovely little steal. Benton Kurt sweeping it out to the right hand side. Pedro Porro, can he put the cross on the uh, sixpence? No, it rolls 
uh, too far and it goes to Werner in the end off the bounce Werner sending it across punched away by Henderson and that's going to go out for a throw in a Tottenham far side of the field offside it's an offside flag in fact a one to one they won't firstly a thrust to get yeah. to it offside flag's gone up free kick and Will Hughes just trying to G the crowd up one last time here Steve with two minutes of added time to go yeah he's done it several times actually and, and you have to give these Crystal Palace fans credit they've been absolutely superb back their team they've been in full voice and I think they've enjoyed what they've seen today a point of decent performance I mean you can't ask any more physically in terms of how they've pressed today Crystal Palace and they thoroughly deserve to get their noses in front and they have an opportunity to increase but you have to you have to give a little nod to Henderson as well he's made some crucial saves well, at crucial Madison times was superb, wasn't it? yeah in and the one from Kulosevsky early in the second half that yeah. goes in we've got a completely and utterly different game Van der Ven back to his goalkeeper Vicario a minute of the allotted time to go that was added here at Selhurst Park where the crowd the home crowd absolutely desperate to see this one over the line Pedro Porro sweeps it forward and that will go all the way through to Henderson helps it back into his penalty area and then dives on it gratefully Oliver Glasner turns and applauds and just listen to the din here at Selhurst from the home fans Oliver Glass is almost acting like a conductor. Yeah, but you normally see this from one end of the Palace contingent in terms of their fans. It's so way over there on the right. But this is everybody in unison around the whole ground. It means an awful lot to this football club. They've had a real tough start. And this win was pivotal today. And I didn't I don't think many people on the outside gave them a chance to win this one. Richarlison moving it forward down the left touch line. Werner, who doggies made a great break into the box but boots the ball into the hoardings in frustration as it just comes off his shin as he chased that down the uh, line and look at Mateta, he's going back and high-fiving his fellow players who've given absolutely everything here many of them have fallen to their knees as the final whistle goes Crystal Palace have got their first league win of the season at the ninth time of asking second win in 19 games in the Premier League against Tottenham as well it's a big day this for Crystal Palace at Selhurst and for Tottenham just the second time this season they've drawn a blank and failed to score along with that game against Arsenal it's finished here as we hand you to London Stadium in the closing stages of West Ham Manchester United and our commentary team Bradley Allen and Nick Godwin it's over here and Crystal Palace have won it against Tottenham by a goal to nil snatches it clear uh, and it Hello everyone, welcome to London Stadium where we have played for nearly 10 minutes of stoppage time at the end of West Ham against Manchester United and the Hammers lead by two goals to one, relentless attacking by Manchester United who are absolutely incensed by the manner of the uh, way the goal was, uh, the penalty was awarded, huge controversy, it took forever, Jared Bowen slammed it home and that is why West Ham lead by two goals to one and time is running out for Manchester United who got back into it when Casemiro cancelled out the Somerville goal but David Coote the referee at the centre of a huge controversy long after the incident and when we say long after the incident we mean minutes after the incident took place he was called to the monitor to review De Ligt's challenge on Ings it looked soft but after watching it for ages he gave the penalty. There was an enormous argument, which took even longer. Then Jared Bowen stepped up, slammed it home, and we're running out of time. But Manchester United are on the attack. Bruno Fernandes gets it wide to Garnacho, left edge of the penalty area, cutting in field, running square, offloads to Ahmed Diallo. Now some space here for Fernandes, who shoots wide, well wide in the end. Fabianski was rooted. He knew. No one else knew. Bradley Allen's alongside me. There's a minute to go. This would be a colossal victory for West Ham United. Yeah, that's the key descriptive word. Because they were really struggling, West Ham. First half and Manchester United were completely dominant. Loads of chances that they wasted. 
Credit to Lopetegui for his changes. That's brought speed, intensity in the second half, notably from Somerville. He got the leveller, and then that bizarre penalty that was awarded, so contentious. But Bowen, with real coolness, slotted in. Is that going to prove to be the match winner by the West Ham captain? Well, here come Manchester United once again. They've got about 15 seconds of the 12 uh, minutes to go. And uh, the referee, is he going to let the game continue? He is, and Somerville is almost put through. But Manchester United still have it. They're baying for the whistle inside London Stadium. I think there's still another two or three minutes here. I'm okay. not joking. Well, what are we all getting so excited about? 2-1 West Ham. Dying moments at London Stadium. Wide to Garnacho on that left-hand side. So many white shirts waiting for this. Garnacho lifts it in. It's going to drop to Zerzi. He shoots. It's blocked by Kilman. Comes out of the edge of the box. Still we play on. Lindelof. And now Ahmed Diallo is going to swing this into the penalty area. Kelman with the clearing header once again. Somerville lofts it clear. Runs out for a throw in. Yuna Lopetegui with more instructions. Dallot gets it back to the halfway line. Manchester United have to get this downfield as soon as possible. We're playing the 13th minute. West Ham 2-1 up. Huge controversy over the penalty. This is extraordinary. Here come Manchester United again. Fernandez. Oh, he's ballooned this over the top. I just want to give you the excuse that the Premier League have come up with. Is the referee going to blow? He is! He's blown his whistle and West Ham have won! Julian Lopetegui with the most significant victory of his managerial regime so far. Eric Ten Hag shakes his hand and makes a beeline for the officials. There is going to be one hell of a row about this because Manchester United got back into it at 1-1 with Casemiro's header and then minutes, I really think it was minutes after the incident in the Manchester United box, the referee was called to the monitor and after looking at it several times, he gave the foul by De Ligt on Danny Ings. The Manchester United players protested furiously but Jared Bowen stepped up and slammed it home and then for the remaining 10 minutes or so of stoppage time Manchester United were kept out by these West Ham players who must have thought their chance had gone when Casemiro equalised but Jared Bowen with nerves of steel in those circumstances getting it absolutely right when it counted the Premier League match centre has issued a statement about the decision to give the penalty and it goes as follows. The referee did not award a penalty to West Ham for a challenge by De Ligt on Ings. The VAR deemed there was sufficient contact on Ings' lower leg and recommended an on-field review. The referee overturned his original decision and awarded a penalty. Well, Bradley... That doesn't really provide a great number of answers, but if you can sum up the 90 minutes, and particularly the last 15, I think that would be very helpful well, to people at home. I, I will endeavour, Nick, because that was just one crazy football match. First half, you know, we see clear evidence of how and why West Ham have struggled so far this season and their inconsistencies, because Manchester United should have been home and hose with the multiple of chances that they created and wasted. Credit to the manager, Lopetegui, who's under serious pressure here with the changes that they made. And what do you want from your subs? Go and have an impact, make sure you're ready. And that's exactly what happened. And, you know, Somerville brought an injection of space, uh, speed and, uh, and quality. He got himself in a key position um, on the end of Ings' scuff cross come shot to turn in and uh, there was wild celebrations and at 1-1 you thought West Ham you know would you know get themselves a hard earned point and then there was that challenge in the penalty box it was clumsy more than anything not a huge amount of contact by Delete, and it was one of them that happens a million times really in any Premier League or Football League fixture up and down the country the ball went down the other end the game carried on the referee didn't deem it as a penalty and then in his earpiece, bizarrely, to 60-odd thousand people in the stadium, the managers, the coaching staff, everybody, he was asked to go and have a look at it on the screen. Did he miss contact on Danny Ings? He's gone and viewed it and he's given a penalty kick. It's crazy.
there was a time there was a delay Bowen slotted it in and then West Ham you know heroically defended their penalty box when uh, Man United just bombarded them at the end to get three invaluable points for, for them what a game uh, <laughs> absolutely crazy um, a reminder that West Ham should have been rubbed out in the first half Manchester United were guilty of so many awful misses but it's an incalculably important victory for Julian Lopetegui his West Ham team have beaten Manchester United by two goals to one